Blog Talk Radio. Ten years ago, a crack commando unit was sent to prison by a military court for a crime they didn't commit. These men promptly escaped from maximum security stockade to the Los Angeles underground. Today, still wanted by the government, they survive as soldiers of fortune. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire... I'll see you talk. The show that makes the hockey gods frown. It's the LCS Hockey Radio Show. Brought to you as always by Honest John Churchfield and by the number one hockey site in all the land, LCSHockey.com. LCS, squirting Gatorade in the mouth of fake radio. Uh, Michael Jackson has plans for a big comeback return by announcing that he is turning his 1982 album Thriller into a Broadway production. The show is set to follow the same type of story the video did with all the werewolves and the zombies, and Jackson recently started working on Thriller after theater heads rejected his first idea, Jesus Juice the Musical. Jesus Juice the Musical. <laughs> and uh, rumor has it that Donny Osmond will follow in Sister Marie's footsteps and partake in the next season of Dancing with the Stars, which would now make her a little bit country and him a whole lot of gay. I haven't heard a cry for help this loud since the Ryan requested more monologues. That's all I'm saying. Good Lord. Ah, uh, how about this? The SAG Awards were held this past weekend, and sweeping nearly every category was Meryl Streep's face. <laughs> what? I don't even know. <laughs> SAG Awards? Uh. Oh, all right, I got you. <laughs> all right. It took a uh, while. Yeah. yeah, that's a thinker. That's another thinker. Here's another thinker. Um, NBC has bowed to public pressure and decided to pull a new PETA commercial that was going to run during the Super Bowl. The commercial entitled Veggie Love showed scantily clad women provocatively rubbing vegetables over their body. NBC decided to pull the ad after they decided, uh, quote, it depicts a level of sexuality exceeding our standards. And perhaps the censorship, the censorship issue can be worked out but in the meantime, all the vegetable banging duties have been placed solely upon Demi Moore. Demi I, I, I don't know what that means either. Because <laughs> Ashton Kutcher is so stupid. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> Another thinker, Mike Dow. I mean, you know, these aren't just, uh, you know, you got to work for the punchline here. All right, we're back again tonight, and we're going to be talking all things Penguins with Wilkes-Barre Scranton beat writer Jonathan Bumbley. Did I say that right, Jim? Bumbley. No. Bumbley. Uh, Bumbley. There you go. Sorry, buddy. And uh, that's not all. The Ed's going to be here tonight. And uh, rumor has it he, he wants to go uh, head-to-head with Jim Ivino in Super Bowl trivia. So stay tuned for that. And uh, Cousin Brandon's going to be back and once again try to defeat me in some trivia. Uh, Roadhouse trivia this time. And in case you missed the karate kid, kid ass whooping I put on him a few weeks back, maybe, just maybe, Cousin Brandon had uh, to call upon certain family members to come on the show tonight and help him out because uh, he, he can't take the Larry. So uh, stay tuned for that. It's a, it's a trivia-filled hockey show, and none of it's hockey-related. But, uh, you know, that's what we do here. So if you want to call in, don't. <laughs> yeah, don't even bother. Uh, so, yeah, figure it out. All right, just let's start this show. Uh, joining me as always is LCS Hockey's editor-in-chief and a man that even in his 30s is still not tall enough to ride this ride. It's the very busy Mike Dell. Uh, Jerry Farish, first of all, I'm plenty tall to ride. I'm 5'11". I, I always get branded by you as being like a midget or something, but no, oh, I'm, I'm normal height for You're my age. barely taller than Jim Ivino. <laughs> Jim's like 4'8". So I do him. not need to stand on a box. I'm, uh, I'll admit, I'll admit, I'm drastically underweight, but uh-huh. I'm, not, I'm not under height. But uh, maybe that's yeah. it. Maybe you're so skinny it makes you look shorter. <laughs> yes, it's hard to do. Yeah. But yeah, we can't we can't have phone callers tonight because we have a jam packed show. Yeah, okay. Well, not nobody's ever called anyway, except for <laughs> Frenchie. Frenchie calls in once in a while, but uh, other than that, nobody calls. So we have a very matter. tight schedule tonight. 
Is, yeah. is our first guest here? Or should we? Uh, I got no guest. All right, all right. You let me know the minute the guest appears. Well, I think Jim Ivino's here. Do, you, do we count him as a guest? Absolutely not. But you let me know the minute the guest appears. I will certainly do that, Mike Dell. I will certainly. Jim Ivino, are, you are here. What's up? I am. I am. What's up, guys? What's up? Just got finished watching the KHL All Star Game, which I found somehow on TV on the Universal Sports Network. Oh, oh the that's KHL. Cool. The KHL, the Russian, Russian League. League sports. Yeah, it's the Russian League. That's the Russian League. So I watched that. It was Team Yager against Team Yashin. Oh, that actually, God, Yashin. That actually took place a couple of weeks ago, correct? Yeah, yeah, it did. It did. So for some reason they showed it. So I'm like, oh, there's no other hockey on here tonight. So I watched it. So huh. and it was outside in, like, with the Kremlin Red Square or whatever. Ooh, that had to be spectacular. Yeah. Outside game. It was a nice view, yeah. but the ice sucked the entire game. Huh. Just like puck just bounce, 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 bounce. So, but he got to see all my favorites like Alexei Morozov, uh, um, let's see, Yager, Yashin, Andre Nikolishin, who for some reason was wow. playing defense. Really? Not sure why that was. <laughs> uh, Alexei Zitnik, uh, Radulov, all the big name stars. Hey, Ben uh, Clymer. Ben Clymer. Oh, Ben Clymer. He's very good. Hey, how did the uh, uh, Alexei Morozov look? Because um, going back to Russia, he's been a dynamo. He's been always leading the league in scoring. And just, yeah, uh, like he had a lot of chances, but he never. I don't even think he scored. Um, so it was it was always the same thing, you know. He come down and the puck would just like dribble off the end of the stick. So. But did he look like a player? Did he look like a confident star? No, he looked a little taller. Oh, all right. <laughs> Maybe they should. Have Maybe you should have thrown uh, Brodor in net. Morozov would have had a field day. Yeah, Morozov used to torture Brodor. The one guy he could score against was Martin. I've never got that. You know, he, he didn't score against anybody else except for Brodor, the greatest goalie to ever play the game. Yeah. Well, no, not really. Uh, yeah. Or do, you, or do you mean Scott Clemenson? Because uh, Scott Clemenson he might be the greatest goalie to ever play the game. He's you better numbers than Brodor, you know? Uh, well, he's, you know, Brodor's sleepy. He's sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> Not exactly the toughest gig in show business, playing goal for the New Jersey Devils. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, our guest is here, Mike Dell. You wanted me to alert you the minute he oh. was here. So, well, Jim, you, 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 yes. you got any nice words to say? Well, all right. Well, since we're going to bring him on, this man is the uh, Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins beat writer for the Citizen's Voice in Wilkes-Barre Scranton slash whatever else you want to put out there. Um, since, like, I think he's been there for, like, 32 years. As a beat writer, so let's welcome him, Jonathan Bomboli. Yeah, John, are you a, there? Yeah, that was almost a nice introduction. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of, a lot of enthusiasm behind it. Yeah, you were pumped. Yeah, and then, well, then I got a shot at the end, and that was nice. <laughs> well, well, I'm just saying that you have been there as long as the Baby Penguins have been in existence. That is so, correct. This is this is the tenth season. It's not yeah. the thirty-second season. I'm not that old. Wow. Well, well, Jonathan, right before the show, uh, Jim Ivino informed us that we could call you JB. But is yes. that right if we call you JB? Because that People makes do me, call uh, me that, yes. yeah, it makes me feel like we're on the uh, Fox NFL pregame show on the old. Oh days. yeah, that's right. They do call uh, him that, don't they? James Brown. Yeah. Can I be Terry? Uh, <laughs> of course. How <laughs> do? Right, there you go. <laughs> uh, so, Jonathan, uh, what's going on? I guess you guys uh, are in the middle of your All Star break. I guess out there is that right? Yeah. I decided that um, that well, and like you know, I was in Western Mass for the All Star Game Sunday and Monday. Uh, practice resumes tomorrow, so I decided that um, Tuesday and Wednesday are the writers' All Star break. So I've been enjoying my All Star break by uh, and watching watching lots of match game and eating French toast. Well, there you go. I was just going to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, any good episodes that you want to share with us? Well, see, well, here, if I could touch on the French toast, here's oh, sure. the thing, right? Because you know when it snows, all the old people go out and buy bread, milk, eggs, and toilet paper. So I, I, I can only assume that what old people do when it snows is make French toast and go to the bathroom. And that's pretty much all they do when it snows. So I decided to follow that same formula, and it's been very rewarding. I would recommend it for anyone. Wow. Well, that's all Larry. Larry does even when it doesn't snow. <laughs> yeah. Huh? I like the match game. Syrup. <laughs> if you're watching the match game, what about Charles Nelson Riley? Is he any any uh, golden moments from old uh, Chuck Riley? Anything going on? Um, 
no, I don't. I can't think of any. Uh, nothing sticks out as memorable. But I've been. You know, when the thing is, when Gary Berghoff's in that seat instead of Ooh. Charles Nelson Riley, that's yeah. like that's terrible. It's time yeah, to change the channel. Yeah. And that really is painful. Great R. O'Reilly on the match. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's okay when he's in the first seat, but when he's replacing Charles with Nelson Riley, you can just forget about it. And that Bart Braverman from Vegas, do you remember him? <laughs> no, I actually don't. He's on in, in regularly, and that guy's a total jerk. I don't like him at all, and, and uh, uh, I want to publicly say so. He took some shot at Pittsburgh one time when I was watching it. It made me very angry. And so uh, I, now I'm glad that you guys gave me this public forum to register my disdain for <laughs> yeah, Bart time. Braverman, who, who no one has mentioned his name in 20 years. He may, he may not even be with us, for all I know. <laughs> <laughs> but you have a blood feud with him now, so that's good. I do, indeed. Yes, yeah, a public feud. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, all, all right, right. Well, this gives me an idea for another new segment for the show where we just talk about the match game for 10 minutes. Because I really uh, would yeah. enjoy that quite a bit. Should talk <laughs> the match game. I would come up. I, I did, um, on my blog, I had a contest to give away tickets to a game. Uh-huh. And so I uh, I created my own match game question, and I had readers answer the question. So you guys, do you guys want to take a shot at it? Yeah, please. Yeah. 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 Okay. We used to have the theme music on the show because we, we played it once on the, uh, an early version of the show. But uh, I think we've lost that sound effect. But yeah, go ahead. All right, it'll go like this. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly. It was Willie the Winger came back to the bench and he was really upset. He said, uh, I can't believe I didn't score on that play. It was so easy, even Blank would have scored. Huh. Uh, That's a tough one. Huh. Yikes. Even Blank would have scored. I would have said uh, I'd go with Jim Ivino, and I'm not <laughs> talking about hockey. <laughs> That's exactly my answer as well. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. That was my going to be answering. That was my answer. <laughs> wow. Well, what was the curveball ball for Leah? <laughs> <laughs> ah, so, so what was the winning answer? You, I, you know, it was, ready, or? it was a lot of, like, um, uh, like Wilkes-Barre Scranton uh, specific answers, you know, like the PA announcer or the Zamboni driver or something along those lines. Maybe how about Jeff Jimerson might be a good answer. Ooh, yeah. Pittsburgh favorite yeah. Jeff Jimerson. Well, yeah, it could yeah, be Kid thought... Crosby the way things are going uh, lately. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, true. Yeah, so, right. By the way, it's 1-1 one, tonight uh, in her second intermission, Rangers and Penguins. Well, well, Can I tell you my shot? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Can I tell you my, the favorite answer that I got? It's really a, sort of off-color. <laughs> oh, um, sure. It's a family show, but do what you got to do, you know. It was Kelly Lindbergh was the answer I got. Hmm. <laughs> Is that really off color? Or just kind of no, disrespectful and sad? <laughs> disrespectful and sad is what it is. Right. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. It made me laugh. Maybe I'm a bad person. <laughs> huh. Uh, I don't know. Well, well, enough, ti- enough time has passed. I mean, come on. You know, nobody's yeah. that bad. That, I, I, I didn't feel that bad about that. So. Well, all right. I don't know, well, JB. I, 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 I lost only, a lot of respect I, for you, JB. I lost a lot of respect. No, 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 no. I only bring that up to illustrate the depravity of some people out there. You, yeah. you got to keep your eyes open for those people. Uh, yeah. Well, so, well, speaking of depravity, did you watch the NHL All-Star game? Um, like a very little bit uh, because I was doing the AHL All-Star thing. I saw overtime in the shootout of the All-Star game. That's about it. That's the best part to see because the rest of it pretty much sucked. Um, yeah, actually, I, think hockey, I caught you know? I, I caught the right uh, you know I caught the right uh, you know good timing. But the, game's uh, the really thing weird. about it is you'd be excited about a shootout if you hadn't seen a million shootouts yeah. plus a million in the skills competition. I mean, you're kind of shootouted out. Uh, but it, it was but, worth watching the shootout just to see Alexei Kovalev uh, go upstairs on the longa. That was that impressive. Was very nice, absolutely. Yeah, the best game with the finish. That was that was fine. Um, it was actually it was a surreal a scene. I'll tell you, I was watching it um, at the. Uh, they had a skills competition, the AHL skills competition on Sunday, and they had at the they had a reception afterwards, and they had a hu- and it was in a huge ballroom in Worcester, Mass, and there was a big screen, like almost a movie sized screen, where they had the NHL All Star Game on, and in front of it was a stage where Joshua Tree, the world's premier U two cover band, was playing. <laughs> so, like in the middle of like. Um, uh, I don't know, Vertigo or something, uh, everybody in the room cheered, and the the uh, little fake Bono had to turn around because he wanted to know what was going on, and it was the shootout beside a goal. And well, well, this is more important than, than any of the all-star shenanigans, but what does the little fake Bono look like? Does he dress in leather pants and 
weird sunglasses and stuff? Or? No, no, he doesn't. He looks nothing like Bono. He, he, he's a uh, uh, he, he kind of looks like the UPS guy that does that draws on the whiteboard. <laughs> oh, all right, yeah, <laughs> that's true, right, dude. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. If the is being now, would you say being the world's premier U two cover band is that quite a, a an accomplishment? No. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure either, but... I want to say being U2 is quite the accomplishment, but that's just... Yeah. <laughs> Calm down, Mike Dell. You know U2 is one of the best bands ever. Yikes. Right, yeah. You're sitting there trying to decide, if you're the world's greatest U2 cover band, what do you close with? Um, uh, well, my, my favorite song uh, ever is uh, One, so I would close with One. It's a strong message to go out on, a hopeful message. Mm. They, yeah. they decided they closed with uh, Pride. Huh, well, that's good. That's good. It's same idea. It's a hopeful message. It's a strong finish. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Or at least it wasn't Sunday Bloody Sunday. So. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a big fan of that song. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> and then anything after, say, like 1995, is all trash anyway. So yeah. Yeah. why didn't they close with Lemon? That is such a yeah. good song. I mean, some, somebody seriously told me that their favorite U2 song was Vertigo, and <laughs> I was like, that's like saying your favorite Rolling Stones song is the Harlem Shuffle. Ooh. It's just a, it's just a bad it's a bad move. You don't want to be that guy. You a Stones fan? <laughs> uh, a little bit. Oh, I think uh, we're losing the connection. The Ed's here. Uh, <laughs> what the hell? The Stones? Who canceled? They don't have music up there. What's going on? <laughs> like Jonathan what do you? Pretty good taste. Well, what's he? Is he? Is he? Uh, Jonathan? Are you a fan of the Ziggins? <laughs> um, I, uh, That's Jim Avino's go-to to band, the Ziggins. Oh, okay, no, I don't know them. I'm uh, yeah. No one does. Don't feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but uh, while well, the NHL All-Star Game's not worth even discussing, uh, the skills competition I think we need to uh, talk about. Now, uh, Jim Avino, did you see the NHL skills competition? I did. I, I saw some of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Defend your boy Ovechkin, because uh, we, we know you love him and uh, you want to have his babies and stuff. But uh, <laughs> he was just—it was just stupid. That whole thing that he did in the breakaway, it was just dumb, you know? It well, wasn't you know, it, clever, it wasn't funny, it was just dumb. He didn't even score, you know? And he went, <laughs> it's the second straight breakaway contest he's won without scoring a goal. How, <laughs> what is going on? Well, he's that good. Yeah, see, it's, it's all about the uh, production. And, yeah. um, I don't know, the, 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 the Russians, they got, they got a crazy sense of humor. I don't know, you know, they just go out. Dancing at the discotheque and then the <laughs> zany ideas and you know uh, I don't know, but it was so stupid. And now we have to watch it every stinking hockey game that I watch. They got to show a clip of it and say how great it was, how how creative and charismatic Ovechkin. No, it was dumb. It wasn't entertaining at all. JB, what are your thoughts on the big uh, Ovechkin debacle? I'm not sure what what was the look he was going for. Like, what was he supposed to be dressed up as? Exactly? Uh, I don't know. It was like. A Canadian version of Hunter S. Thompson. That's exactly what I was thinking as well. Uh, well, you need the cigarette a, holder in the you know in the bottle of tequila, and then it would have been nice. But uh, yeah. yeah, I was going for uh, a dumber Gilligan. <laughs> I, I mean, the thing is, like, if it was, that's what it looked like—some kind of beach getup to me. Yeah. And so, like, yeah. if they were playing, if they were in Florida or L.A. or something, it would have been a nice move. But they were in Montreal. I don't. I think it, it was so gay. I think it's trying out for Dancing with the Stars next season. That's it was right. That gay. I've never that. seen anything like it. What kind of man squirts Gatorade in another man's mouth? I mean, <laughs> you got to pay for that on the internet usually. Yeah. And, you know what? And, and, and why are they ending that doesn't. feud? We want that feud to continue. That needs yeah. to be like uh, you know Ric Flair, Macho Man, or any Savage thing going on. We we want to see that angle for the rest of the season. And now it's done. We can't even talk about it because they're buddies now. You know. Yeah. I'll, I'll believe that when I see it. I mean, they said they went out to dinner and stuff afterwards. And but the next time they play, if Ovechkin runs him every time he touches the puck like he did two games ago, the field will be back up just fine. Yeah, I don't. Know. I yeah, hope that, so. That's, that's all I can say. Yeah. I think it's oh. funny that Kovalchuk has brokered the peace deal. Yeah. Well, since when did he become you know, uh, you know the big leader of he's, the Russian players? <laughs> like he's Henry Kissinger or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, well, so, well, maybe it's setting the table for Kovalchuk being traded to the Penguins, right? Maybe. Yeah. Ah. Him and Malkin will be buddies now. Yeah, there you go. But, uh, a little foreshadowing. Now, 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 who did the best job in the breakaway challenge? If, if you guys had to pick. Yeah, you, no, Larry, you say Martin St. Louis. 
Now, here, when I watched it live, I was totally, uh, I didn't even get the fact that he, he pretended to put the puck on his blade. Yeah, yeah, yeah you missed that. You missed I know, I didn't even notice it on the first, because I've seen Robbie Shrimp do that, you know? And th- so why did he pretend to do it and not just do Robbie Shrimp stuff? You know? Penguins just scored. Oh, look at that. Jordan, Jordan Stahl. Stahl. Like, yeah. Take that, did, uh, you Rangers. Speaking of the reason, did you see Goddard, like, pretty much knock out Colt Knorr? Yeah, right off the drop of the face off there, the opening face off of the game, he fought for punched him right in the face. Nice. Dropped him right to his knees with a square shot in the mouth. I loved it. All right. Yep. All right. But anyways. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, Martin Saint Louis was nice with the spin and things, but yeah, I was disappointed when he uh, he tricked me. Uh, I mean, good for him, but couldn't he have actually done that? Uh, yeah. I like yeah, I like those spinoramas. He had he had a good velocity on that, you know, on whipping it around there. He didn't fan on him. And, and uh, guess what? <laughs> And did the old Kid Krause from behind the net. That was nice. You know? Yeah. But, you see, he tried to, like, kick, like, uh, hacky sack the puck yeah. in the net. And the one, that was, like, yeah. almost, almost. But, yeah, overall, it's still just silliness. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not worth watching. JB, did yeah. you have a favorite moment of the uh, skills competition? I didn't really see it. I was uh, covering a game in Hartford. Oh, Hartford. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so tell us about Hartford these days. Are they still, like... You know, still harkening back to the whale at all, or like people bring out yeah, signs. Well, of, they they have all the retired numbers up still. So, and uh, uh, J- Jerry's got to play that. Don't ever wanted to be a fish, he'd be a whale. Believe that, he'd be a whale. All right, that's right. Mm-hmm. Jerry remembers once every six months to play that. <laughs> <laughs> it works out. But yeah, the whale. We missed uh, the big, the first uh, tri- road trip LCS ever took was to Hartford for the draft in Hartford, and. Uh, we feel a connection to the Hartford, but uh, I know uh, I saw a game there, uh, a Whalers game, like when I was in college, and uh, I remember Stu Grimson fought Tony Twist at center ice. That's the only thing I, it's the only thing I remember from the game, but that was sort of like the moment that made me interested in hockey fighting, because it was like so the place went nuts. I mean, as you might expect, that's a serious heavyweight battle. Yeah. That was awesome. Nothing, nothing nearly that entertaining there this weekend. I'll tell you that much. It was a terrible game. <laughs> no, Jim. I, I, yeah. Jim, I think I can speak with you when I say we love Hartford so much. Uh, we haven't gone back in 14 years. That's <laughs> that's true. That is true. Yeah, it's true. It, it reminded me of Pittsburgh, but uh, dirtier. Really? <laughs> a little bit. I don't. I don't know. That's the impression I got, Jim. Was that? Um, it was. It reminded me of Greensburg with a lot less to do. <laughs> yes. Wow. <laughs> Very much so. Vivid picture you're painting. I don't want to yeah. go. <laughs> uh, really don't. All right, JB. Well, let's get into your wheelhouse, the uh, Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. Uh, what What should we know about this team? How's uh, How's our boy Yanni Pesman looking? Yanni. Uh, he had a fight. He had a fight Friday night. Ooh, we're interested in that. What teenage mean, girl did he fight? Yanni Pesman, <laughs> really? Yeah, exactly. Keith Coyne, who is uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Keith Coyne, but he's about five foot nothing. Wow. And yeah. Um, yeah, the Pesman didn't, didn't even drop his gloves. <laughs> well then, is that a fight, really? Uh, he was throwing—he was throwing punches in the game of a major, huh. but he never—he yeah. never dropped his gloves. It was one of the sadder fights I've, I believe I've ever seen. Wow. What about Alexander Semin? Was it—was it worse than Alexander Semin? No, no, it wasn't nearly that embarrassing. <laughs> uh, but at least, like, if if Pesson had dropped his gloves, it would have looked like a fight between two guys that don't know how to fight. It wouldn't have looked right. like a—I don't even know what you'd call <laughs> yeah. that Semin. That was just a total embarrassment to his manhood. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Right. But how, how's Tustin looking on the ice? Uh, any chance of him uh, making any sort of an impact this year at the Penguins? Here's the problem, I think, as far as that goes, is that um, he needs the puck on his stick. Um, he's, a, he's a playmaker. He sees the ice really well, and he, and he just needs that. Um, and he's not going to get that, you know, if he plays with Crosby or Malkin. So, you know, could he come up and play on, like, some kind of third line with a couple of guys, you know, where he could he could do that, you know, with a Talbot or whoever? Um Sure, I could see that happening. But as a top six guy, I just don't think it works in terms of style of play. Like he'd work really good with a with a, you know, like uh, some shooters. That that would be good line mates for him. But I, you know, he, yeah, there aren't look, there aren't many of those lying around in Pittsburgh. <laughs> there aren't too many isn't, shooters lying around. Isn't that the truth? He's done everything that you could ask of him in the minor leagues. He's been real good. I just don't. I don't see it translating necessarily. Not in this team. I don't think he's a good fit. What about uh, Luca Caputi? 
I like Goku Caputi. Uh, he, like, he plays a game that will translate, I think, to uh, what Crosby and Malkin do. Because here's what he does. Like, people call him a power forward, and that's, don't, don't get, uh, that's not it. He's not like Kevin Stevens in his prime. He's not, he's not Brendan Shanahan. Um, what he is is he, he has, like, he's really good at protecting the puck on the wall. He's really good at digging pucks out of the corners. And then he takes the puck to the net. Like, if he's cycling, he's going to take the puck to the blue paint and see what happens. Um, and it seems to me that if you put him on a line with a couple of talented players, that would be a really good thing to have. So I still see him as a, as a good prospect for a top six kind of role. Absolutely. Is he a good enough he's skater guy, right he's now? He's got to be excited about. You, you think he's a good, good enough skater to make the jump? Yeah, he's a good enough, I think he's a good enough skater because of the game he plays. Like, um, w- when a guy is an is a iffy skater and he plays like a skill game, I'm, I'm thinking like Milan Kraft. Uh, that just doesn't work. But if you're if he's an iffy skater and he plays that sort of garbage game around the net, I think he can still pull that off. What he needs is that that sort of uh, explosion, the first step kind of quickness, and uh, he's he's okay with that. And he can get that's the kind of thing you can get better at. You know, as you get stronger, as you get older, as you you know work with in, in power skating, you're not going to get you know your 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 stride isn't going to change as you get older, but that first step might be able to get a little bit quicker and, and a little bit stronger. So, yeah, I think he, he, his skating isn't – I don't think it'll kill him. I, I just hope Milan Kraft isn't listening to the show tonight. <laughs> his feelings are going to be very good. Uh, do you mind me? Do you have uh, another question about Wilkes-Barre Scranton you'd like to ask? Well, I don't know. I, I was just looking through or the – about Milan Kraft? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's about Milan Kraft. Yeah. <laughs> but, Milan Kraft's sister was an excellent tennis player. Oh. Oh, that's all. I have nothing more. Right. If you wanted to know. <laughs> um, they also make a damn fine macaroni and cheese at family. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So I was just looking through, the, looking through the stats, and I noticed just in the in the plus minus category, Ben Lovejoy is like leading the team with a plus uh, like twenty five. I think it was I saw earlier today. Mm-hmm. I've seen him a few yeah. times with the Penguins, but is, is it? You have you seen him kind of you know develop this season as someone who's like wow this guy could fill in and and be a, a solid maybe fifth or sixth defenseman for the for the big team. Yeah, I think so. Um, and the reason I think he, that plus minus leads the league too. Um, there you go. He is he's a great skater, and uh, that can make up for a lot of other things that he still needs to learn. And uh, you know if if it comes down to a cap situation because like I don't know who's. Uh, Who's a free agent after this year? I mean, I know Scuderi is, um, the, Gill is. There can be some moving parts. Uh, if that's the case and they wanted to slot uh, Lovejoy in in the bottom pair to save some money, they could absolutely do that. Because, I mean, you know, I mean, like if, if a guy can get around um, and then skate, he, he, <laughs> that's like more than half the battle. So, yeah, I really like Ben Lovejoy. He's a, he's a, uh, he's a smart kid, good player, um, good skater. Mm-hmm. And uh, no, you think he, they... Go ahead. He's, he's he's just a he's a good dude. Cool. All right. So, so now it matters if... now. <laughs> well, he's a good judging dude. judging prospects on if they're fun to hang out with, but. <laughs> well, that would be so, Ryan yeah. Stone, right? Wasn't Ryan Stone the one of the yeah. problems he was too much fun to hang out with, and that's why yeah, they had to get rid of Well, you know what? That I don't think he got the two public drunkennesses. Or, I don't know what is that the right plural <laughs> drunkennesses? Uh, sure. Um, but he, uh, I don't think that really hurt him in the organization. I mean, if hockey players being drunk is, you know, I mean, <laughs> that's pretty much how they operate. But. Um, the, the funny thing was that the second one he got, it was the second one or the first one, I heard what he was doing was um, he was um, standing at he he was standing at the door of the bar um, checking IDs when people came in. I don't know. I thought that was funny. Like he pretended he was pretending yeah. he was the bouncer, but he was wasted and uh, got into <laughs> some trouble with the cops, and they have him. <laughs> Yeah, how, how do they feel about Ryan Stone going to Edmonton there and Wilkes-Barre Scranton? Are they all upset about it? Or? Just a little bit, yeah, because um, nothing came back for the minor league team in return. You know, you'd think you could always ask for a, some prospect who hasn't worked out for Edmonton in return. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, it, it, I think people understand for the most part that um, Stone really wasn't going anywhere in Pittsburgh. I mean, you got to understand this. When he got called up, he played two games this year in Pittsburgh. 
he had 10 hits in those two games. I mean, so, you know, and then he got sent right back down and was never called back up again. So that's pretty clear to me that they didn't have any plans for him because what else do you want from a fourth-line guy? You know, two games, ten hits, you didn't think that's exactly what you want out of him. So, yeah, I think the bloom was off the rose there. So, you know, if Edmonton asked for him, then, hey, you got him. I don't understand why they didn't try to get Pouliot in that deal. Yeah. Mark Pouliot from Edmonton because he's Sid's buddy, and who knows, maybe they could, uh, you know, spark something. And, and Pouliot's not doing anything in Edmonton. You could get him for, for a draft pick, I would assume. Yeah, that wouldn't have been a bad idea. Now, what about these kids that are up here now? Uh, the Chris Menard, the uh, uh, the uh, what's that kid? Wallace and uh, Thomas. A- any hope for these, those guys? Should we, uh, you know, care well, about I them? Well, I mean, what they're using Thomas for right now is uh, centering Bissonnette and Goddard. He'll probably play four minutes a game. Uh, he can definitely do that. Um, I I like Menard um, because I, he's a shooter. And like you said, there aren't any of those around in Pittsburgh. So, and, you know, he he doesn't uh, like even tonight. He had a he had a turnaround shot on goal that led to Sakura's goal, um, and it wasn't necessarily the greatest shot you've ever seen. Um, it's a it's a shot that a if I might channel Don Cherry for a second, it's a shot that a European would never take. Um, but he just kind of threw it there on the net, and Sakura cleaned it up. So. Um, that, that's why I think he has a place. I really do. I think he has a place somewhere on the third line, maybe on the second line. Maybe he could play on a stall, um, just because he's a guy who will get the puck at the net. And by Although the way, the, the, yeah, the Penguins to me, are the biggest one weakness. Now. Yeah. yeah. To me, the biggest weakness in Pittsburgh is they don't have anybody who will stand in front of the net. Yes. I mean, who does that? Nobody. Yep. Menard's not big on that, but I mean, for a paycheck, he'll do anything. So. Who won it? You know. Yeah, I'm exactly. Yeah. Caputi would do that, so, too, if you asked him to. Yeah. So, all right, so I remember last time we talked to you, it was in training camp, and you had a, a really good story. I believe it was about Tim Wallace, right, and, like, uh, seeing, like, a moose on a golf course. Is that correct? Is that my remember yes. this right? Yep. So, he's from, Al- so, he's from Alaska. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, the moose is from Alaska. Um, <laughs> so... Um, any really good stories from the first half of the year that that you can uh, kind of rattle off the top of your head? You know, your best your best uh, investigative journalism come up with anything uh, for the first half of this year? Nothing better than the moose seeing a a bear eat a moose live. <laughs> That's tough to beat, you know. I um, I was just looking at something. And it, was, it was actually from last season, but um, I was just looking at it for something or other, and uh, it was about Connor James. When he got called up, um, he was he was grocery shopping at the Wegmans here, right down the road from the arena, mm-hmm. and uh, and they they couldn't get a hold of him. He didn't have a cell phone, so they called the Wegmans and had him paged. <laughs> so he, uh, he 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 was paged. He was at the meat counter. He went back to the, he went to the front to answer the call. They said, "Hey, you're called up. You know, come to the arena." So he went to the arena. Um, Got called up. The game was in on the island, so he, he, they they got there. They got stuck in traffic. And if you'll recall, that's the game where he showed up like halfway through the first period and scored a goal. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they sent him right back down after the game because it was trade deadline day. That's what it was, and uh, so they didn't need him beyond that. So he came back, um, and then um, it's a 24-hour grocery store. He resumed his shopping when he got home. <laughs> huh. That's a good story. I, know, I think that's funny. His yeah, shopping trip was interrupted by playing in an NHL game, and then he went back and finished his shopping. Oh. So they just, wait, he like left his cart there and everything. It was so weird. <laughs> I didn't ask him that. That's a good question. If there, I mean, if there were like if there was meat in it, that would be kind of gross. But oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Uh, now JB, the last time you were on the show, uh, the phone lines went dead and everything. Uh, so uh, thankfully that hasn't happened yet. But uh, we missed out on talking about the office because you're, you're you're from Scranton. You're up there, Wilkesbury Scranton area. We want to hear your take on the office because uh, Larry and I watch it all the time, and basically uh, we we think it sucks now, right, Larry? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty but this much. this past week's show was very good, I thought. Um, what happened this week? Um, Michael and uh, Dwight try to go undercover at that local little. Oh, the mo- yeah, the mom and pop paper place. Yeah, and then, yeah. Then they debate whether or not Hillary Swank is hot. Oh, yeah, that was a, yeah, yeah, Kevin was great in that episode. I was, <laughs> See, I think that reminded me of an old school office episode. Cause it actually yeah. One storyline that had to do with the paper business, 
and then one about just shenanigans, and yet they both revealed character. So there you go. Now, now, JB, what are your thoughts on The Office? This uh, I, I don't. I, I watch it like every now and then, but I, I'm not like a big fan or anything. I, I'm more likely hurt. to. I'm more likely to check it out on like the TBS reruns than I am the actual. Uh, current that hurts. Season. I was counting on you to be our, our Scranton expert. Or, I mean, uh, I, I like it. Expert. You know, I, I watched it I, uh, every now and then. I like it. I, I watched. Uh, I tend to watch, you see 10 items or less, have you seen that on TBS? It comes I've seen commercials for it, but it just yeah. doesn't, you know, entice me to watch it. I don't uh, know. I would, I'd, I'd give it a shot. It's not bad. Huh. Uh, it's uh, it's worth watching, but I don't mean to hijack you there. I mean, I, I'm just not a good office. Uh, I could do office space better than I can do the office. Huh. Yeah. So, so what else have you been watching then, uh, besides 10 items or less, and anything else on the TV? Well, much match game. Of course. Oh, that's right, the match game. Yeah. Yeah. And, hey, Hell's um, Kitchen starts tomorrow. If anybody's interested. Hell's Kitchen. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Larry loves cooking shows. Yeah. Can't get enough of it. I hear you. Um, uh, I watch every week. I uh, DVR. Don't forget the lyrics. It's my favorite show. Don't forget what? the lyrics. What? <laughs> Wayne Brady. Oh my lord. <laughs> this interview is over. <laughs> I can't believe I just admitted that publicly. Wow, but, I thought you were just kidding. He's right. Oh, I love that show. It's like my Why? favorite show. I, I like the game show aspect of it. Well, you know, like, as far as the lip-syncing show or whatever, I, I thought the other one with uh, the, the in-sync guy, I thought that one was better. Yeah, I only saw that one a couple of times. But I, I don't know. Here's why I've decided I like this show. Right. Don't forget the lyrics. I always watch it on, on uh, TiVo, and... Um, Wow. I, I like, uh, so I fast forward through all the shenanigans, and it's to me it's all about the game. I'm a game show guy, so oh. I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I apologize. Well, then what's, I, the I also, best, well, what's the best game show ever, if you're a game show guy? The match game. The match game? What, yeah. what about, what would be number two then behind the match game? I'm going to say probably The Price is Right. Yeah, but now do you watch it with Drew Carey? Because it's basically unwatchable now, right? Drew Carey yeah, is so pretty, terrible. Yeah, he's bad. But I, did you see the thing recently about the uh, the guy that had the exact right guess on the uh, showcase showdown? No. Yes. It was I didn't like, hear about that. yeah, he got he got it exactly right. It wasn't like you know fifteen thousand seven hundred. It was like fifteen thousand seven hundred and twenty six, and he got it exactly right. And it turns out th this is amazing to me. There are people who are like Price is Right freaks. And they, they study the show, and then they go and they sit in the audience. And if they, if you, if they sometimes reuse prizes. Well, in this case, the four prizes in the showcase were prizes that they've already used. Oh. So this guy knew. I, he remembered. He memorized the prices. Oh, wow. Added them up and then signaled to the guy who was giving the bid, and he got it exactly right. So the question is this. Was that cheating? Should they have canceled the guy's winning bid? No. No, 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 no. Uh, not really, because they they encourage audience participation. They tell you right. to yell your answers out to the guy. Well, here's so the that, question: Is that a lot of work for a deep freezer? <laughs> it sounds it's like a, it. Seriously, you should jukebox. You should read the message. Board. You should read the message boards that these people have. These prices right freaks that know all the. Well, oh, wait a minute. What's worse, uh, the prices right freaks that have the message boards, or you for frequenting the message boards? <laughs> Uh, that's a fair question, but I, I don't frequent them. I just came across oh, right. them when uh, uh, when this controversy was was brewing uh, about. And, and you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of you know that guy that uh, figured out the sequence yeah, pressure on luck. pressure luck. That's right, and, pressure luck. Yeah. He's an ice cream no, man, right? An ice cream salesman or something. And he, yeah, and uh, but there was nothing they could do about it because he didn't cheat. No, nope. he beat the game. So this guy sort of beat prices, right? I guess. I think it's a it's a it's a fascinating story. Yeah, that these is the cool kind of, these are the kind of things I find interesting. Yeah, exactly. Well, nice. what are the real quick? What are the best uh, games on the Price is Right? There's only one answer. What's the best game? Go. Well, uh, Plinko is probably the best. That's game. That's right, Plinko. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. Number but two. I'll give, you, I'll give you another strong contender: is Cliffhanger. That's yeah. right. They're yeah. the, they're the top two: Plinko yeah. and then uh, Cliffhanger. Bang. One, yeah. two. Now, what's third? <laughs> third is trickier. Yeah, third is much trickier. Win. I don't know what the third one would be, but uh, but maybe hole in one. Hole in one or two. Yeah, hole in one or two. That's <laughs> strong. And uh, I always, for some reason, I like the punch out where they had to punch yeah. through that little paper thing. Uh, yeah. I always enjoy yeah, that. Good one. I like that one. Huh. Well, I'm glad we could break down prices right. Okay. Safe cracker. 
Yeah. Oh, safe cracker. That is a good one. Safe cracker. Yeah, that was like always that. a good yeah. one. Yeah. The dumbest one is where they just got to put the prices on like two of the three items. Remember, like yeah, yeah, there. yeah. That's that's when they're behind schedule and they need to get a quick one. You know, <laughs> you know? Or, or the car. I like the car one where they have like the nine uh, things and they pick a you know, and they had to match the front end with the back end of the car. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or, or, or that's the, right. If you pick the wrong one, you end up winning like candlesticks or like seventy-five yeah. bucks in cash. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and uh, what's the other? Oh, where they roll the big fuzzy dice. That was. Oh always, yeah. yeah. And then I some old lady would never get them over the line. And Bob Barker would have to go back. No, get them over the line. You know, you got to roll them over the line. <laughs> was, we got trouble great. brewing in the Penguins game here. It looks like Biz and Ed was yeah. getting ready to square off. But of course, they'll go to commercial. Why not? Well, it's four-one yeah. Penguins, so this game's yeah. over. Uh, hey, the Ed's here. Oh, the Ed's here. All right, all right, JB. Well, I guess uh, we'll let you go. Um, yeah, thanks so much for coming back on the show. You're in the two timers yeah, club now, you know, two timers club. Oh, good. Two appearances, so you'll get a nice uh, smoking jacket, and you can Don't wear tell my wife. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I hope you keep us updated on all things Yanni passing in and uh, Wilkes-Barre Grand Penguins. Anytime, fellas. Tell the other says hello. Oh, uh, we'll do that. All right, all right there he goes, JB. Hey, all right, JB. Thanks, Jonathan Bumbuli. And uh, we, we got a link to his stuff on the LCS Hockey, so uh, just look for uh, JB right there on the side and uh, mm-hmm. go read all his stuff. Good man, Jonathan yeah. Bumbuli. All You're right, a good, blogger. Uh, a good blogger. Yeah, good blogger. Yeah. Ed. Yeah. Hey, thanks Ed. for holding on there, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, my ear got hot. I had to put it on speakerphone. Oh, right sorry about that. Yeah, we were talking to our buddy uh, Jonathan Bumbuli, uh, a hockey writer, and we were talking about the Price is Right. Now, I know you love the prices, right, Dad, right? Yeah, uh-huh. And you, still watch it. <laughs> you still watch it with the Drew Carey, correct? Baker was, but he's still all, you know, he's all right. Well, well yeah, Bob Barker, not Bob Baker, but, yeah, uh, he was good. But, uh, yeah, I hate the Drew Carey. And you know the thing I hate the most about the Drew Carey is every what? time they spin the big wheel, uh, you know, because he always asks them, is there anyone you want to say hi to? Mm. Why, why are you not supposed to say hi to nobody? That really irritates the hell out of me. Just spin the wheel, you know? I don't want to hear you say hi to your grandma back in Tennessee. Just spin the wheel. I think that's nice they do that. <laughs> I don't know. But if I'm ever on The Price is Right yet, I'll say hi to you, all right? I don't care. <laughs> all right. Fair <laughs> enough. So what's, what's going on, man? Yeah. I was just sitting here watching all these losers tonight. I, le- I did a stupid thing. Uh, 14 parlay? Yeah, I let little Jay pick the games tonight. I let him pick eight. He picked out eight games, little Jay did. So <laughs> yeah. far, he's 0-4. This kid's got a gambling problem, and I told him, listen, I said if he lost more than three games out of those eight teams, he was going to be banned for a while. So Yeah, just to let everyone price, know, man. Uh, over Ooh, at the cool. Dave Damashek message boards, the Damashek.com, the ad is trying to get people together to win a $5,000 uh, parlay ticket. He, he wants to bet games every day until he wins enough uh, to get five thousand dollars. And it's been tough sledding. Uh, we haven't had much luck. Um, I have with yet. Like uh, I think the longest we've gone is like maybe four or five days in a row, and then bang, losers. This little J man is terrible. Yeah, <laughs> little J. <Jay. laughs> yeah, the Ed's blaming the little J. But uh, yeah, they were all his picks. He tells me, oh, he he text messaged me this morning talking about, hey man. Uh, we got a super deluxe monkey parlay and all this. Stuff. I'm like, how does he get one of those? I don't understand it. <laughs> That's right. The super you know, monkey deluxe parlay is just something the Ed does. And, I uh, guess it. Yeah, he tried to get one and he didn't know what he was doing. Because listen, these guys don't understand, man. You can't. I, I ain't even. He, he kept telling me the other day when I hit the five in a row. Mhm. Okay. I took small time schools. And I, yes, the day after that I went four and one, so I'm nine and one in two days. But hey, it's a parlay, so we're out of the we're out of the running. Mm-hmm. So, but anyway, he picks all these big TV games. I don't like to bet on any games that are on television. And first of all, if a game is close, supposed to be close, I don't like taking the road team. He took every road team just because they was ranked higher. Hmm. He's a dummy. He don't know. <laughs> You know, if, he right, goes yeah, 0 and 8, if he goes 0 and 8, he'll never get a pick another game in his life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dad. Well, let's put away your personal feud with Lil' Jay. All and, right. Uh, He's a good guy, though. I like him. <laughs> let's focus on some other uh, events coming up, the Super Bowl. Now, I heard you were on with our buddy uh, Dave Damashek on his podcast, and you, you picked the Steelers to beat the Cardinals in the Super Bowl. Yeah, that way. Ain't no problem. 
You, you know what else I like? I like how you put the. I liked how you put Dave on hold. Yeah, that's right. You're on the Dave's podcast, and you put him on hold, and you took another call. And he's like, and then, and then he says, uh, he goes, "What do you mean?" You told him hey, it wasn't your mother, so don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That was, that was good stuff. That was very good. Everyone should go listen to that. It was Tuesday's podcast. No, the had never called me. Who, who was calling you on the other line that you had to put the Dave on hold? <laughs> uh, I don't even know. I don't even remember doing it, really. Oh, what was that? Right. <laughs> it, was, it was during the show there. It was, it was very good. Yesterday. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people call all day long, man. I just say hello, and then they say hey, and I say hey, what's going on? So That is true. The Ed does get a lot of phone calls. Oh, there's the baby. There's the baby. Got get away from the door. I'm on the radio. All over the world. Get away. <laughs> ah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> What's up with the baby tonight, Ed? The, I think the, the baby, baby might be in trouble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I just gave him a Mountain Dew and three cookies. Jesus Christ. Go away, <laughs> man. Well, that Come could have explained on. it then. Maybe he's just rowdy because of the Mountain Dew and three cookies. Stop it. You're, lo- you're going to break the lock on the door. Get away. Go downstairs. You don't take your Mountain Dew and go. <laughs> I'm all jacked up on Mountain <laughs> Dew. <laughs> You can have cake later. Just wait a minute. Wait about, <laughs> I'm going to be on the phone for like two hours to go. Get some cake and some, and I'll give you some pizza. Go on, go. I like it over at the end. Some cookies, cookies pizza, pizza, cake, go. and Leave the door food. alone. The end, what kind of cookies did, what kind of cookies did you give the baby? Double stuff Oreos. Ooh. I love it. Yeah, well done. Now, uh, the end, you heard that we were going to have a trivia a little bit later on the show with between Larry and Cousin Brandon. They're going to be doing Roadhouse Trivia. I know. And I told you I went there the other day for eat, and I, I was going to get a menu and stuff and try to see, you know, they could get no, the prices of the menu. That's something different. That's Texas Roadhouse. That is that is a restaurant. Uh, it's not a movie. We're talking about the movie Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze. Now, well, I ate there not too long ago, so. <laughs> again, again, something completely different, but we'll not worry, we won't worry about that. But, yeah, so Brandon's going to take on Larry, and you said, well, hey, I'd like to do some trivia. So I thought, well, with the Super Bowl coming up, and you are a football expert, maybe I, I could ask, maybe I could ask you some Super Bowl trivia. Would you like that? I mean, well, I mean, you could probably do it, but, you know, who knows? Oh, and by the way, the Ed, you're going to be very excited, but the Penguins are beating the New York Rangers tonight 5-2. Why would I be happy about that? Because you love the Penguins. And uh, Chris Letang has two goals, and he's looking very good. So, yeah, how about that? Five two. All right. So uh, the Ed, our buddy Jim Ivino is here, and maybe he'll he'll go head to head with you in the Super Bowl trivia. I got seven questions here. They're they're very good. And uh, and here's the other thing. On uh, when you're on the Dave show the other day, uh, tell the people that you love Jeopardy, and that you have yeah. not missed. You tell the people your streak on Jeopardy. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't missed a question in Jeopardy in nine years, and now <laughs> the Dave tried to give me a question. <laughs> he has a he tried to give me a question and. I got it right, and he owes me $500, doesn't he? Yeah, that's right. In fact, we have uh, audio proof of this. Uh, Larry, I think if you look, <laughs> the clip is called Ed Day 500 Bucks. Right. <laughs> yeah. Can you Here play that clip for us? She is the Secretary of State in Barack Obama's new cabinet. Who's Hillary Clinton? Wow, the Ed, pretty good. Not too bad. All right. That's $500. I'm adding it up. Yep. Oh, there it is. Dave says, yep, <laughs> 500 bucks. That is so, a legal contract right there. I think it is. I think the Dave owes you $500, yet. I know. I've been waiting for it all day. It didn't come in the mail. Huh. That, that's two grand he owes you now. Yeah, because he owes you $1,500 from I before. I know. And see, now we got video proof of it. <laughs> or or audio, but yeah, one of the two. <laughs> and, that's right. Uh, and a bowling ball. And a baseball mitt. Well, he owes you a lot of stuff. So we gotta, what happens, man? Yeah. All right, so uh, maybe you can win a prize in the Super Bowl trivia. And but just to get you uh, in the mind, in the proper mindset, because Dave says he's going to put together a Jeopardy uh, quiz for you in the coming weeks. I want you to answer all these questions like Jeopardy, like you know, you answer them in a form of a question. You know, like who is, and you know what I mean. I'll try. I don't know if I can get them, but I'll try. This don't count on my Jeopardy streak though, because this ain't a real Jeopardy. Yeah, this show. isn't. Yeah, this isn't the regular show. So it's like a, a non-title defense. You know, it doesn't go to your, your normal record. It's training camp. It's training camp. Yeah, yeah. exhibition. Yeah. That's all. All right. All, all right. right. We'll start you off with an easy one. And if you can't get it, I'll ask Jim Ivino, and maybe Jim Ivino will know it because he's a football expert as well. Right, Jim? Right. That's correct. All right. There you go. 
All right. All right, Diaz. Question number one. His 215 receiving yards is a Super Bowl record. 215 receiving yards in one Super Bowl? In one Super Bowl. Ah, uh, Jerry Rice. Please state it in the form of a question. Oh, who was Jerry Rice? <laughs> That's right. How about that? The yeah, Ed nails that one right off the bat. No, I almost, get, I almost said another answer, but I didn't. Yeah, who is Jerry Rice? Now, Ed, if you go seven for seven, will this count towards your Jeopardy streak? Yes. <laughs> okay. Very well. All right, question two. Uh, we'll start out easy. They'll get harder as we go along. Uh, the, the only two teams to score 50 or more points in the Super Bowl. Who gets the question? You, the Ed. We'll, we'll just we'll just keep giving them to you until you miss one. Cause I don't Why do – what do you mean? <laughs> All right, you know what? I changed my mind. Jim Ivino, this one's for you. <laughs> the only the only two teams to score 50 or more points in the Super Bowl. Oh, I know. I thought it was my turn. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give Jim Ivino a crack, and then we'll see. All right, yeah. let him lose it. I don't care. I, I didn't All know. Right. I thought we were taking turns. Go on, Jim. Say the wrong thing. All right. Um, so 50 or more points in the mm-hmm. Super Bowl game. Mm-hmm. Washington Redskins. Yeah. Well, 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 first, yeah, that's right. Please put your answer in the form of a question. Yeah. Yes, he lost it. My turn. <laughs> yeah, you uh, missed it anyway. All right, yeah, go ahead. Redskins and Bears. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you both missed it. And please, once again, put your answers in the form of a question. Larry, do you know it? I have no idea. Who's the Redskins? Who's the Bears? Yeah, that's wrong. What? <laughs> uh, think about it Didn't some more. Didn't the Redskins They're... put it on the Broncos, right? No, uh, they only are in the 40s when they beat the Broncos that time. Someone else beat the Broncos, and they scored 55, though. Oh, 49ers. That's right, 49ers. 49ers. And That's then what someone, I meant to say, man. And someone whooped up on the Buffalo Bills, they scored 52. Dallas Cowboys did That's that. That's right. How many did the Bears put on the on the Patriots? I think 45. Yeah, I think it was 45. Uh, well, technically, that's 50. <laughs> well, <laughs> not really, but... I think technically All right. it's 45. All right, so, so you missed the one there. All right, uh, question three. Who holds the Super – or wait, I'm sorry. He holds the Super Bowl record with four touchdown passes in a single quarter. The Ed, who do you think? In one quarter, somebody threw four Super Bowl passes. What? Four, four touchdowns in a single quarter. It was the second quarter of the Super Bowl game that he played. He holds oh, the record. Oh, what's That was Doug Williams. That, that's wow. Who is Doug Williams? Who yeah. is Doug Williams? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super Bowl that's twenty-two. Why Red, that's why I thought they put up fifty some points. I can't believe they didn't let the dogs out on them like that. Yeah, they went up like thirty-five-seven or something, and they. Yeah, I remember, up. man, because I I remember that Super Bowl. They sent me up in the second quarter to go get some more drinks at the convenience store. And I was <laughs> oh no! A little bitty TV at the at the convenience store when it was like thirty-five-seven something like that at that yeah. point. Yeah, I don't even know what the final was. It may have only been 38, but, uh, yeah, they whooped up on him. And that was the game Timmy Smith went for 200 yards rushing that game. Yeah, uh, Timmy score. Smith, man, what a bum. Yeah. All right, uh, the Eds are very good. All right, Jim Avino, all right, it'll be your turn now, Jim. You ready? All right. He scored the first touchdown in Super Bowl history. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, who is Bart Starr? Oh, uh, no, that is incorrect. No. Incorrect. Uh, Ed? Who he scored the first touchdown in Super Bowl history? I know it was a Packer. Yeah. What's the running back name? Jesus Christ, man. Horn, nor, horn, horn, horning, Paul Horning. No, that's incorrect. Larry. Paul Horning. Uh, I'm gonna go with Jim Iavino. No, you're all you're all wrong. Jim was close. Uh, <clears throat> you guys are both close. It was a Packer, and uh, Bart Starr threw it, but it was to a receiver. A 37 yard touchdown pass. To anybody? Jimmy Smith. <laughs> Max McGee. Who is Max Jesus. McGee? Yeah. Man, that's a song. And Who I think in the hell Kid, is Max McGee? And Kid Crosby just scored a really, Max really McGee. nice backhand shot. So Kid Crosby's got a goal and two assists tonight. Yeah, he's lighting up the Rangers. Yeah, Who was Crosby. the MVP of Super Bowl One? Um. Oh, MVP of Super Bowl One. Uh. Yeah, I don't know. Jim Ivino. Bart Star. Ah, yeah. Yeah. All right, there you go. Kid Crosby just piped the backhander from the bottom of the left circle. Who cares circle. about that? It was awesome. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. So the Ed, you're uh, well. You're only one for two. Jim missed his. All right. Uh, next no. question here. Huh? Right. Uh-oh. 
You all right, Dad? I got Doug Williams and Jerry Rice, man. Oh, that's right. You all right? You're two for four then. Very good. Yeah, and he's one out. Of, he's one out. Of, I'm two out of two. He's one out of. <laughs> that's right. All right. Next question. He, now this is kind of a complicated one, so pay attention. He won three Super Bowl rings, despite uh, only completing 13 of 32 career Super Bowl passes and totaling zero touchdowns and four interceptions. What happened? Oh. He did what now? <laughs> All right, yeah, I, this is very confusing. He won three Super Bowl rings despite completing only 13 of 32 career Super Bowl pass attempts and throwing zero touchdowns and four interceptions. Mm-hmm. Roger Staubach. No, 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 no. Who is Roger Staubach? <laughs> no, no, no. Roger Staubach had very good stats. You no, know, these stats are terrible. But, but he, you said yeah. the guy, oh, his friend. No, he won three Super Bowl yeah, rings. Yeah, he won three Super Bowl rings, but not necessarily he was the starting quarterback on this. You know, but oh, tricky, they, tricky. Yeah, question. a little tricky. Oh, Earl Morrell. That's right, Earl Morrell, yeah. Yeah, who's wow. Earl Morrell, yeah. For the Colts and, uh, yeah. And the Dolphins. And the Dolphins, that's right. Yeah, he started the Super Bowl when Bob Greasy. Well, no, I don't know if he even started. He got he was on that undefeated. He was the quarterback for a lot of them games on undefeated season. Yeah, I think Greasy got hurt like two weeks into the season, and then uh, yeah. Morrill took over, and then Greasy came back in the second round of the playoffs, I think. Hey, Jim Trevino was speechless. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Jim Trevino was speechless. All right, all right, Jim Trevino, this one's for you. He was the first defensive player to win Super Bowl MVP. Ooh. Hmm. Would I go with uh, the Raider? Who is the Raiders' cornerback? Uh, Larry Brown? No, no, no. He, he was about the fifth or sixth defense player. No. All right. Uh, Ed, he was the first defensive player to win Super Bowl MVP. I was gonna say I was gonna say it was Lawrence Taylor, but no, he I don't didn't think it. it's him. Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. I don't think it was him. Hold on. Oh, you know who it was? It was that goddamn safety. What's that dude? No, Cowboys. Ah, shoot. What's his name? Uh, Chuck Howley from the Cowboys. Right. It was like yeah. 71 or 72, <laughs> wow. something like that. 71 yeah. or 72, yeah, yeah, yeah. Super Bowl five, Chuck Howley. Uh, uh, I was thinking Jake Scott, but he was the second guy, I think. Wow, I got to tell Jake you. Jake Scott, yeah, impressive. he was on the Dolphins. He's a safety. That's why I was getting him confused. And who was Randy White won it. He's a defensive yep. tackle. He tied with his one teammate. And they I had, think it was teammate now. Yeah, Randy, Randy White and Harvey Martin. They That's right, it. Harvey Martin. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Richard Dent won it when the Bears did it. Larry Brown yeah. won it with the... Uh, yeah, Larry Brown got it with the Raiders. No, he was on the... Yeah, Larry Brown was the Cowboy. Yeah, then he the went Cowboys. to the Raiders after that, yeah. And then that kid from the Buccaneers won it, too, uh, Dexter Jackson. Remember, he had... It was a ridiculous that he won it. For the oh, Buccaneers. yeah, yeah. He got, yeah. like, three interceptions. Ray uh, Lewis two. got yeah, it, too. Two. Ray Lewis got one. Yeah, that's right. Ray, Ray Lewis, yeah. He didn't win the Raiders. That's what he did to turn it for. They said, no, nah, Ray, we'll get you. But what, what, was, uh, what was interesting about Chuck Howley, though, the, uh, there was something else interesting about his MVP, that no one else has ever done this. He was nude. <laughs> That's right. He was. Hold nude. on, hold on. What do you mean? I mean, he wasn't there's something else. There's another significance to it. He, not only was he the first defensive player to win the Super Bowl MVP, but it's the only time in Super Bowl history that... A losing a, a player on a losing team won MVP. Oh yeah, okay. The, I didn't know the that. Colts beat the Cowboys 16-13. Yeah, he was MVP, and that game featured 11 turnovers combined. The teams were just I think, terrible. Yeah. I think he went. I think he played college ball at West Virginia. Or... I think that's right. Actually, yeah, <laughs> I, I do think that's, that's very good. All right, now one last question. Uh, we'll we'll give it to Jim Avino first because I know he's not going to get it. Uh, Jim, he holds the Super Bowl record for three interceptions in a single game. We just said it. No, that guy only had two in that game that you, you said. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, he, he holds the Super Bowl record for three interceptions in a single game. Um, Dexter Jackson. No, he, he had two. Three. Uh, oh, well, that's what I, I thought you was talking about, Dexter Jackson, on that no, one, man. No, no, no. Three interceptions Hold in on. a single game. Let me try to think about these Super Bowls, man. Jesus Christ, man. That's a, I mean, how many people could even get three interceptions in one game? It don't even make no sense. I know De- De- Jake Scott didn't get three, but he was the Super Bowl MVP, though. Mm-hmm. Well, this guy got three interceptions, and he wasn't even the MVP of the game. 
No, Larry Brown got – how many did Larry Brown get? Larry Brown had three in his career, I believe, but only two in one game. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Don't know that one. Yeah, uh, Rod Martin. Who is Rod Martin? Oh, from the Raiders. Raiders. He lied. That's right. <clears throat> Your phone was breaking up there, but Super Bowl 15, he, he picked off Ron Jaworski three times. Yet Jim Plunkett was named uh, the MVP of the game. Yeah, Jim Plunkett's mom, mom and dad both was blind. <laughs> That's right. That's right. He's an Indian boy. So, the, yeah, you you did, uh, uh, I don't know, at least this doesn't count towards your streak because you missed about three or four of those. But um, yeah, I got most of them, though. Yeah, you, you did get most of them. But I answer, I, but I tried to, but I tried to get an answer for all of them too. See, in Jeopardy, I don't try to answer if I don't know it. I just won't say nothing. Yeah, that is true. That's the wise way to go. Don't always buzz in. You know, just if you don't know you it, don't just buzz be quiet. In. Yeah, because you don't want to lose your right. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it, we're coming up to the top of the hour now, Larry. You let me know the minute our, our special guests arrive. Oh, I will, Mike. Dell. I right. will. But until then, uh, <clears throat> the Ed, why don't we tell people you got a show tomorrow? on the blog talk at 10 o'clock Eastern time. And you have 7 a very... o'clock. No, 7 o'clock, not 10 o'clock. Well, well, 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Las Vegas, your time. Right. But uh, tell the people who's right. going to be on the show. Um, me and you and whoever calls in, we'll, call, we'll take calls. So call in. But you have a special guest. Don't, don't you want to tell the people a guest? When, tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, you, you're going to have uh, your buddy Zach Rosenfield from AccuScore.com. He's going to be on your show. Oh, yeah, he's supposed to call. I don't, I'm, I don't know. I don't know if he's supposed to or not. <laughs> yeah, he's going to call because AccuScore uses computers to predict sporting events. The Ed uses Yeah, he don't know, phone. man, he don't know nothing. I, I ranked all 343 basketball teams with my dice. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> And he's not kidding. He really did rank all 300. Every every Monday, that's a new feature. Every Monday, I put it on the message board. A new feature. Yeah. Yeah. Celtics won 119 to 100 over the Kings. Now, Jim Ivino, you still have uh, yet to sign up to the Dave Damashek message boards and join in any of the Ed's many games: the Super Deluxe hockey game, the Super Deluxe <laughs> basketball game, the Super that's Deluxe true. parlay. No, what's the deal here, Jim Ivino? Why don't you come over and join the fun? Well, I was going to, but I thought I couldn't join the hockey one. I can't do that, right? Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah, the hockey game is going to end in a couple of days, the end of the month. But uh, yeah. you can start go. another one, though. Yeah, he'll start. Yeah. All right, I gotta go. I gotta go. All right, bye bye. <laughs> bye, the Ed. Sometimes right, the bye. Ed has to go very quickly. Wow. There he goes, we the Ed. We couldn't get him off the phone last week. Yeah, and then this week he just had to go. He had to go. <laughs> All right, well, cousin Brandon's here. Oh, see, look, this is working out nicely. No, at, least <laughs> at least he didn't fall asleep. Yeah, bring on Cousin Brandon. Cousin Brandon. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Cousin Brandon, you just missed the Ed. He had to go very quickly. He just had to run off the phone real quick. But That's unfortunate. But let me just ask you something right off the bat. Is this uh -huh. going to be another one of those nights with the bad reception? Um, no, so. no, I don't think so. It's been pretty good. Uh, I think that was God. the Ed's cell phone that was breaking up. But It's terrible on my end. Really? Yeah, maybe right. I should start calling Yuri Peck. How would that be? That's just the show, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, just the show. Sir. Are you using a cell phone or a landline? I don't own a landline. I'm calling from a cell phone. <laughs> All right. Well, just oh, stay, away, stay away from the microwave and stuff. You know, just... Oh, this is horrible. Wait, so I shouldn't try calling me back? It's going to sound like this regardless? Well, we'll, we'll try, try calling back. Yeah. Try calling back. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Okay. Farewell. All right. There goes Cousin Brandon. He'll call back. Maybe, well, we if he doesn't fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, we know he's awake. We know he's ready to go. Larry, do we have any dialing music while he dials in? No, we don't uh, have dialing music. So I don't think no, so. not really. We could play this. Why don't you... You have my favorite song we could play, don't you? No, I don't have that. I'm pretty sure it's there. Yeah, I'm not so sure. <laughs> what, what song are we talking about there, Mike Dell? Maybe a little something called I Love the Singer? By Al Jolson. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, uh... We don't, we don't have that. Yeah, yeah, we don't have that. He's back. Brandon! Yeah? How is hey. it? <laughs> uh, it's still choppy. Dang. Well, oh, uh, do your best. I, I, I will. I'm sorry. It, right. it wouldn't be me if I didn't uh, complain. So. <laughs> That's right. Now, uh, we, we should set the stage here. A couple weeks ago, we had the big Karate Kid trivia showdown between you and Larry. 
stretch, right? right? And things yeah. got ugly. I don't want to say, you know, it was like 18-3. I heard stories you went home and threw away your bike. It was, <laughs> it was very upsetting. But yet, yeah, sure. You didn't give up. You challenged Larry again, except this time you picked a movie and you said Roadhouse. That's right. That's absolutely right. Now, now, for people who aren't familiar with the, the movie Roadhouse, why don't you uh, give them a refresher course? I'd love to. Uh, well, actually, I'm afraid to, though, because if I go ahead and do that, so what, what if uh, oh, I unknowingly I give away an answer? <laughs> Maybe right. I shouldn't do it. Let's just say this. Patrick Swayze at his finest. And yeah. leave it at that. We'll just say Patrick Swayze uh, is a bouncer in a bar. Ah, he's the cooler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's the cooler. He's the best damn cooler in the business. That's exactly right. But, uh, um, yeah, it, yeah he, he's, uh, let's just say, look, he's a cooler, comes to a small town in the Midwest to uh, clean up a, uh, a bad situation at a bar whose name I won't repeat just in case, and uh, <laughs> things get ugly from there. So. Yeah, and just, now these questions are much harder than the double deuce. You know, I'm, oh, I'm come assuming, on, see, now you've already given an answer, Wayne. I know uh, that was question number one. I'm, I'm assuming you guys know the name of the bar. You know, this is hardcore trivia. This isn't something, you know... Uh, we play for keeps here at the LCS Hockey Fake Radio Show. You now, should Larry, ask Larry. Larry, did you know it was the double deuce? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah I was aware. Now, now, Larry, you don't even you don't consider yourself a roadhouse expert by any means, correct? No, not even close to it. I just figured since I I put an ass whipping of epic proportions on cousin Brandon a couple weeks ago, I felt bad, and I'm like, all right, well, I'll let him pick a movie. Because, you know, to, to be fair, I never picked Karate Kid. I never challenged anybody. That's true. That the idea true. was just out there, and hell, you know, like, I, yeah, I know Karate Kid, I'll, I'll partake in this. So, uh, you know, when he said, oh, let's do Roadhouse, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll do Roadhouse. And uh, I'll still win. I mean, I've seen Ooh. Roadhouse. I'll wow. still win. You hear that? Yeah. He's, Book it. He's, he's got moxie. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Cousin Brandon, we should also say Jim Ivino, uh, our buddy, is still on the line. Now, now Jim, do you uh, know the Roadhouse at all? I do. I've seen the Roadhouse. Wow. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Jim Ivino actually, saw a movie. And yeah. actually, it was just on last night again on AMC. So there it's always on. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It's true. It is always on. So. Yeah, just turn on TBS and wait. And now, let me, ask, uh, let me ask Cousin Brandon if he has watched it recently uh, as a refresher. Well, look, I know that some people, again, <laughs> like to uh, watch the movie right before we challenge one another. <laughs> Um, and I didn't do that for Karate Kid, uh, hence the uh, the beatdown. So this time around, uh -huh. I not all I not only watched it, I watched it this morning. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, this is gonna be good. Well, I got <laughs> I, I got you top because I watched it. Uh, I got I got the the movie ended at eight o'clock. I missed the first <laughs> ten minutes of the Penguin game because I was finishing Roadhouse. Is that right? Yeah, uh, it's even fresher in your memory. Unbelievable. Okay. Yes. Wait, well, hold on. The Ed's back. Oh, the Ed's back. Yeah. Ed. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> What's going on, Ed? God, he's about to be super mad. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> My stomach started rumbling. But listen, you got to tell the, uh, what you call it. Uh, Cousin Brandon? Uh-uh. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, we might have a surprise guest. I don't know, Larry, our surprise guest isn't here yet, right? Yes, he just showed up. Ooh. Ooh, <laughs> well, yeah. Who's the surprise guest? <laughs> well, I think it's somebody you know. Uh, Larry, would you like to introduce him? Well, why don't we have uh, Cousin Brandon Oh, that's right. He needs because, help. Yeah, let me just say this. Because Cousin Brandon lost, uh, Larry gave him such a beating in Karate Kid Trivia, basically what Cobra Kai did to Danielson. Brandon, playing the part of Danielson, had to go to his mentor, and his, his advisor, his teacher, if you will, and uh, his Mr. Miyagi. Tell him who that is, Brandon. Uh, that would be Cousin Dave. <laughs> That's right. He, he, he That's brought right. in the big guns. Cousin Dave Damashek. Is he there, Larry? What's Cousin happening? Cousin Dave. Dal. 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 Yeah. Larry. Cousin Brandon. Yeah. It's, it's, a pleasure to speak with, it's a pleasure to speak with all of you. Yeah, Cousin hey, Dave. But, yeah, thanks so much for coming on the, the show. Now, we should mention that the Ed is on the line as well, and the Ed wants to speak with you. I said my hellos to everyone I had to say hello to. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> ouch. All I want to know is can I have my $500? $500 now. That's what I owe you? 
But I, more, more foolishness. More foolishness. Now, listen, everybody on the phone, is it foolishness? No, well, no. Dave, we do have uh, we do have audio proof of this apparently. Um, of what? That I owe him five hundred dollars? Yeah, on top of the fifteen hundred that you owe him already. But yes, yesterday when he was on your podcast yesterday, Larry, do you have that clip? Let me play. Oh, that. all right. Yeah. She is the Secretary of State in Barack Obama's new cabinet. Who's Hillary Clinton? Wow, the ad, pretty good. Not too bad. All right. Five hundred dollars. I'm adding it up. Yep. <laughs> now no, there it is, David. You can hear that. You say, "Yep." As soon as he says, "That's five hundred dollars." That is is in no way an indication that. We <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got it yet. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If you hold your breath starting now, I bet it's there before uh, before you have to take a breath. See if you can try. <laughs> I gotta go. This guy's a rip off again. <laughs> All right, the Ed. <laughs> well, we'll see what we can do about getting your money. But uh, thanks for calling, the Ed. We always appreciate it, buddy. Hey, the Ed. By the way, I'm gonna look uh, forward to speaking with you next week on uh, on uh, on my show. And um, I am, in fact, I want to prepare a little Jeopardy quiz for you. It'll be sports Jeopardy. I think it'll be fun. And yeah, sure it, you will. Sure you will. Well, there's not gonna be <laughs> any five hundred dollars on the line. It'll be it'll be. I've already won it. I don't need it now. Do you have, by the way, do you have a DVD player at your house? Or did your son buy you one, I should ask? <laughs> I think we got like three or four of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. So, all right, well, that, maybe we'll start small. You know, a DVD player, a T-shirt of some sort, something like that, and then we'll go from there. All right, well, just get my $500 ready, or Reggie will be buying you again. <laughs> That's right. His buddy Reggie tracks you down at the grocery store. Was uncomfortable to say the least. <laughs> I, 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 I remember, imagine. remember, he knows where you shop. <laughs> I know. I've already uh, laid down the foundation with the wife. Even in these eco economically difficult times, I've already uh, seen to it. The, uh, started the process of moving. Just so. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta All go. Right, the Ed. All right, the Ed. Thanks, buddy. Right. Tell the baby we said hi. There he goes. The Ed. Yeah, it's always a pleasure on the edge. It really is. It is yeah. a delight. I'm looking forward personally to uh, him finishing that story. We got a little caught up time-wise on uh, on yesterday's podcast, but uh, really looking forward to hearing how that story ends about his thumbnail or fingernail that he shot off seven years ago. Yeah, in a bow and arrow <laughs> accident. Just bow at the end arrow. of the interview, just out of nowhere, he says, by the way, I, uh, <laughs> he didn't even say by the way. He just no, no, no. I, yeah. In fact, that's how he says goodbye. After I had told him seventeen times that I had to go, that at that point was a, of course <laughs> an appropriate time to mention the time that seven years ago he lost one of his fingernails. <laughs> yeah, and I think the most intriguing part of it is uh, in a bow and arrow accident. Yeah, I know. Listen, I, I am anxious to uh, speed along. You know, the Super Bowl. I was excited about. Forget that now. Let's just get to <laughs> next week when we can hear the end of that story. Hey, but the, by, uh, way, by the way, wait, wait, the appropriate thing, by the way, when he tells you he shoots his finger off, you you say to him, you say, yeah, don't cry. And then you just hang up. <laughs> that, that's how he likes to go out, apparently, as well. <laughs> like, right. Don't cry, and then hangs up. So. <laughs> hey, uh, fellas, do me a favor, and and then we speak of it never again for the remainder of uh, of this conversation. I have TiVo'd the Penguins-Rangers game. Ooh. I know nothing about it. I don't want to hear what happened, so let's move forward without any uh, comments uh, on Ooh, that all right. in particular. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, though. Is it because you were watching Lost? No, I, listen, don't, don't forget, I'm three hours behind you guys here. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay, good. And I won't mention that it turns out uh, it's all a dream. They just revealed <laughs> that tonight. It was all a dream. Suzanne Blachette wakes up and announces it to uh, Patrick Duffy that it was all a dream. Right? Yeah, they're awesome. in the snow globe all of St. Elsewhere. I think it was crazy. A little weird, isn't it? But, uh, yeah. I don't know. Just hearing Suzanne Plachette made me happy, so thank you. Yeah, oh, yeah. And uh, speaking of uh, what's good is, too, speaking of lost, Cousin Brandon, I want to see if we can get this onto uh, one of those ESPN pages there, but uh, at the very least we'll continue to uh, put that back up on the message board there uh, because, uh, I, uh, boy, it's comprehensive at least, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a novel every week to break, oh, it, to break it down the nonsense on that show. Yeah, if you're a fan of the Lost, go to the message boards at damashek.com and Brandon recaps every episode. Right, Brandon? Oh, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. If you remember as well, uh, back uh, from the Adam Carolla days, you know that I did anything at my job during the day but work. 
So that's yeah. basically, I'm like, ah, oh, that's a good hour out of my day just to write the Lost recap. And, you know, <laughs> so there you go. No, uh, and yes, Cohen Brandon. Brothers. What the hell's wrong with Cousin Brandon? <laughs> I, I yeah. just don't get the guy. <laughs> he teamed up, uh, I don't know, uh, We it's now in the hands of the one-man house band, Dick Banks, but uh, uh, Brandon was very helpful with cooking up some lyrics for, uh, I just thought it was a classic, uh, you know, a perfect blend of, of man, Coach Tomlin, and song. Kenny Rogers, the gambler. So we blended those, and, and uh, hopefully we'll have that for you in time to, you know, help get you extra excited for the Super Bowl. Do you, yeah. think, do you think Mike Tomlin's the coolest coach ever? I. It's funny. I was just talking about that today with, uh, with the sports guy on his podcast that I, I, he really does cut about as cool a figure as you could, as, as is possible. Think about this, is, this has been the domain of uh, Vince Lombardi and Marty Schottenheimer and Brian Billick. I mean, these are NFL head coaches. And, and now uh, you have Coach Tomlin in there. I mean, he's – yeah, I mean, who, how many coaches have you ever seen in NFL history do that thing where they jump up in the air and they, and they touch bums? I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, Coach Tomlin's doing that. And yet he's not ridiculous. He would, if I told you somebody was doing that, you would think he's a joke like Dave Campo – trying to be cool with the Cowboys a few years ago when he was coaching that team. But somehow you can tell that the players respect and perhaps even fear Coach Tomlin, and, and yet he's still out there doing the bum bump with those guys. I, th- I could have sworn I thought Tom Landry is the one that originated yeah. that. No? Or, or uh, Bum Phillips. Right, I guess. Maybe Bum Phillips. Yeah. But yeah, uh, know, me. I don't remember. Well, what about Tom Landry being cool because of the hat? Did you think Tom Landry was cool? I mean, come on. The, the was cool. Little hat. Yeah. No, I, I, you know, I, ne- I never, re- you know, listen. I uh, growing up in Pittsburgh in the '70s, of course, the Cowboys stood out to me as the arch rival. Now, in hindsight, with a little perspective, I realize that that's that's funny because in order for it to be a rivalry, both teams need to win once in a while. <laughs> Dominated that one, but Tom Landry, I always say about them, you know, you the decision for anyone growing up in the '70s is uh, you either go. With the uh, the Steelers, who are about soul, about about grit, about uh, you know about team and and uh, you know black and blue and all that sort of thing, or you could go with the fancy pants Cowboys with the pretty star in their helmet and all the uh, nonsense of them jumping up and down at the line of scrimmage before the snap <laughs> of the ball, all sorts of foolishness. If you support that sort of silliness, then good for you. Root for your Dallas Cowboys. Enjoy them uh, as we move <laughs> deeper into the 21st century without a playoff victory. Well, well, here's the dirty little family secret I have, Dave. Uh, I was born in 1975, and up until about the age of three, I was a Dallas Cowboys fan. <laughs> up until you were three. <laughs> yeah. I don't really remember. <laughs> I don't really remember too much, but I had, like, little statues of Cowboys in my room and, like, uh, ceramics, painted ceramics of a Dallas Cowboy guy. <laughs> and, uh, but then by the time I think uh, the, the second Super Bowl with the Cowboys, I was a Steeler fan, I think. Wow, that's good news then. Yeah, I mean, I, did uh, maybe some maybe somehow a, a terrible towel fell into your crib, <laughs> maybe washed maybe. off. <laughs> poisonous thought, yeah. But yeah, I used, I used to like the star on the helmet. I think I think that's what it was. The fancy pants. Yeah, see, that's what happens to little minds. I, you know, in in six weeks from now, we have uh, joining, uh, you know, little baby Oprah or you know, baby Lemieux Crosby, however you wish to call <laughs> yeah. her. Um, we uh, she's going to be joined by a little boy, and you know, shame the devil if that boy ever decides to try and root for a team. But I, I'm concerned about it. If I try to force him to have my loyalties, then I, you know, he might want to turn against me. He might be a rebel, a rebel, and just out of spite for the old man, maybe he would choose. I don't know the Ravens, but you know what? Ooh, okay. yeah, I don't know who he would root for. But I, you know, the, then I think I don't know if this is taking too hard a line, but then, unfortunately, for the young boy, no TV. Never you know, <laughs> come around. Oh, see, I think you're going easy on him. I say there's this wonderful thing these days called adoption. And you just, or you could just leave him on the front stoop and hope somebody comes and grabs him. That's a or, an option as well. Or, Dave, may I suggest you give the baby to the Ed? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, he has a track record. You're right. He's got a lot of chili. I'm sure he could feed him as well, which is perfect. <laughs> You missed the baby. boy sleep in the bo- in the pot of chili, though. So that was. <laughs> you missed earlier on the show. The baby made an appearance, and the baby was screaming and pounding on the door. And he had said, "Baby, be quiet. What are you doing? I already gave you Mountain Dew and three cookies." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, uh, I, I, you know, slowly but surely trying to uh, work up uh, 
I don't know that uh, that the Eds uh, yarn about the uh, about his little baby. I don't know if we're ready to share that with the national audience yet. Yeah, that, that might be too much. But <laughs> start out with the bow and arrow accident and build up to the baby. Yeah, that's exactly right. Baby steps. Ironically, baby steps to get ah. to the baby story. But yes, uh, that's true. All right, but enough of this nonsense. We're we're here on ser- about serious business for some Ro- serious nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Ro- yeah. Roadhouse <laughs> trivia. Brandon got whooped so bad on Karate Kid Trivia, he had to turn to you for help. All right. And, and, you, and you answered the call. Uh, that's, that says a lot about you, Dave. Good man. <laughs> yeah. Well, guess Family, what? Family, that's what you do. What's about to be said is uh, that when we uh, team up, we're set, neither one of us is going to do well, and it's going to be a humiliation. All right, <laughs> we'll see how we do. Well, Dave, I actually did uh, watch it this morning, though, so hopefully that will give us some sort of advantage. But, you know, my memory being what it is these days, I'm old. Well, I haven't, no I haven't watched it in probably beginning to end in at least three months, but I, then on the other hand, I have seen it at least eight times in my life. <laughs> well, this will be interesting. <laughs> now, Larry wanted to challenge you to the Karate Kid trivia because we, we all know you're supposedly a kid expert. But I well, I, I feel like, listen, here, let me just say something before we get going. I don't want to be making excuses before we even start this thing, but there is a fine line in trivia in general, sports trivia as, a, as, a, as an example. I think when people say, oh, I have a great trivia question for you, and they say, in 1923, who was blah, blah, and it's like, listen, there's a difference between trivia and trivial, and, and, uh, and don't ask me these, these little nuanced things, and Star Wars trivia is another one. Oh, I thought you loved Star Wars, Dave. People ask me questions about what was the name of the guy in the cantina, blah, 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 and it's like, listen, if it, the main name wasn't said in the movie, then why would I possibly, I'm not researching the movie, I'm not researching <laughs> the backstory of what, what happened in George Lucas's head before this movie. So anyway, yes, I am a kid expert. I understand the larger themes of it, what it means for all of us. I understand oh, Daniel okay. San's saga, and I'm fascinated specifically with kid, the specific chronology of Daniel San. I think it's fascinating mm-hmm. that this all takes place in the span of about two and a half years. And if you, I mean, in, in, in terms of not the release dates of the movie, but Daniel San's life there in Southern California, that all happens in about, like I say, you know, maybe not even two and a half years, maybe a year and a half. In fact, I'm not sure if the All Valley Tournament, Larry, step in on this one. Is that the second year of it? Is, is that, I was is just you, I was going to say, I think it's the following year, isn't it? Isn't he uh, basically Karate Two, uh, Karate Kid Two begins right after the tournament ends? Right. Yeah, he goes. goes to Japan. He comes back. Wouldn't it have to be the following year then? I, I, it might be, or if it's not, then it's definitely the the. It's a two year period, and you know, either you know, for a man of any age, let alone for a teenage boy, he squeezes a lot of. <laughs> into that, into that. Oh, although, oh, although, wait a minute, Creed has fallen dramatically from grace, though. So would he have fallen that far in the span of one year? Is the question. Oh, listen. The oh, yeah, I've done it. Cars from yeah. Yagi, you know, shaming him in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, uh, and Cobra Kai falls to pieces. He's, it's a sham, clearly, and the community abandons Crease. Only, thank goodness for the evil millionaire friend of his who swoops in to uh, abandon all of his uh, million-dollar projects to focus on, uh, on his flight, not, not massively ruining the life of Miyagi and daniel son. Just kind of messing with them. That's what <laughs> Karate Kid Three. That's what it's all about. It's not really about. We shall now destroy this uh, this geriatric uh, old man <laughs> and and, uh, and a teenage boy. You know, but we're not going to destroy their lives. I'm gonna, you know, I'm going to play a little head game with them for the next two months. It'll be a lot of fun. No, no Larry. Are you, uh, Larry Silver. Sorry, Larry. Do you consider yourself an expert on all the kids or just the first one? Uh, I would say the first one primarily. I've seen the you know the sequels, and I, I would not consider myself an expert. I, I've seen them multiple times. Wow! All listen, right. we should do we should do some sort of epic uh, in the future. We should do an epic breakdown of the trilogy because you know we have set aside the nonsense with the uh, with the next. The, that doesn't kid. count. Thank you. Yeah, that's that, yeah, right. Nah. Right. It's like you ignore the latest Indiana Jones. Just like it's oh, better to pretend right. it never happened. But yeah. um, if only I could. Okay. Yeah, well, listen, yeah, you can't unsee that mess. But anyway, all right, listen. So with that said, yes, I feel like I know Roadhouse. I understand what it's all about with Dalton. I get, you know, that Dalton is the best cooler in the business. He is essentially a glorified bouncer. But in the world of Roadhouse, 
he is such a good bouncer that if you happen to work in any bar anywhere in the country, then of course you've heard of this bouncer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I like that. Which is always what that is. That is by far the greatest, uh, the greatest scene in the movie. Well, I, and this can't be a question, but the uh, the waitress is. Do you know who that is? Dalton, and she's all excited, and everybody else knows who it is. They have, everybody well, they is have, over the moon they, about it. Yeah, like William Wallace in Braveheart. They they <laughs> always they already have preconceived notions of him. You know, they, of course, exactly. not only have they just heard of him. Of course, Dalton. Well, we work in bars. It's our business to know all the best <laughs> bouncers in the country. And uh, oh, I thought you'd be bigger. I really did. Really, so you you thought it through that thoroughly, <laughs> uh, barmaid. You're really invested in this bar business, ain't you? You're, you work in uh, some fourth-rate place where you might get a ship stuck in the on any given night. But, man, you love the bar business enough to have sat around and thought for at least 27 seconds of your life about what Dalton, the great uh, cooler, uh, might look like. So, wow. uh, Great okay. boy. As you can tell, this is going to be quite the trivial clash right here. Wow. Or not trivial, trivia, I should say, as you pointed yes. out already. Uh, all right, well, let's just get right into it. Get, uh, into Larry, the big, get into the big production piece you put together for this. Oh, uh, you know what? I really didn't have time to do that. But, uh, Larry, play the Karate Kid one uh, from last week. That'll oh. get us in the mood. There you go. All right. Let's get our mind. Right, get him a body bag. Mm-hmm. Now, now, Dave. Before one, one more thing about the kid. Uh, Brandon and Larry came to a consensus last week uh, that there is definitely one best line in the movie. Now, when you think of the <laughs> best line in Karate Kid, what comes to your mind? Um. Hmm. Wow. Best line in that picture. Wow. I. You know what? You're putting me on the spot. I. Yeah. Never, it's interesting. I've never really thought about that. Uh, let me think about it. I know. Off the top of my head, I love when uh, when Miyagi makes Daniel San go stand in the waves and and try and kick the waves um, because I, I I am absolutely positive that that's how Bruce Lee developed his skills. Um, but, uh, and then he notices Miyagi standing on the uh, stump there at the beach, yes. and I also like that it's the beach and uh, in Southern California, and they're the only people there. There's no one. There. It's the middle of the day. It's sunny. No one's there. But anyway, um, he's out on the stump, and then they go back to his old junker uh, pickup truck, and there are those two guys drinking beers on it. And the guy who goes on to play the simpleton character in L.A. Law is now wow. playing is now playing a huh. uh, a racist drunk guy, and he does a terrible, a terribly offensive impression of an Asian man. And he finishes it by telling him, why don't you clean him up yourself, <laughs> Mr. Moto? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's good. What good kind one. of thing is that? <laughs> You're drinking beers on some guy's car. And he says, hey, that's my car. We're going to leave now. So you insult him? What? <laughs> uh, oh, oh, man. It makes me laugh. I don't know. But anyway. That, that should be a new uh, Top 11 idea, the Top 11 line from Karate Kid. Cause that, that would probably be number two. But, Brandon, tell Dave the best line from the movie. The best line is, uh, Daniel, what's wrong? Why'd you throw your bike away? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> best line in the movie. Daniel, what's wrong? Why'd you throw your bike away? Are you kidding? <laughs> Yeah, Mike Dell, by the way, made a great point, dude, and, and said after the bike is ruined, he then walks the bike home after the beatdown rather than just abandoning it on the side of the road. Why did you even walk it home just to throw yeah. it in the dumpster? Oh, that, that is a fine point that I never really thought about. Yeah, that's great. And the and another good one is that is uh, you know you talk about you know um, Johnny is a mean kid. I you know obviously we know this, but. He's really, really over and above the normal bully because when Danielson, Mrs. LaRusso, you know, she, she takes Danielson to uh, to the water park, to the you know the play area, which by the way absolutely exists in uh, here in Southern California, um, and so it's fantastic. I've not uh, had the opportunity to go there yet, but it is exactly the way it is. And um, anyway, when when 
Danielson is getting picked up by his mom. Johnny and the gang, they pull up in a pickup truck, and they start making fun of Mrs. LaRusso. Nice car, Mrs. LaRusso. <laughs> like, wow, hey, 16-year-old punk. What, 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 in what world does that really happen? You start, you hate Danielson so much who you have. No, that's another thing. I love that the entire at the beach, when Johnny beats him up at the beach, he, he's making friends. He seems like a nice kid from out of town, and they're making him feel welcome. And then Johnny <laughs> yeah. comes over and starts to beat up Danielson. So Danielson tries to defend himself. He, he punches Johnny lamely, and then Johnny really lays it on thick, really beats him down, bloodies him. And based on that, all those kids decide, Oh, we thought he was cool, but apparently he's a nerd. Let's just ditch him on the team. Like, what, what, based on what that you just saw, is it that now he must be abandoned because he lost the fight? I don't get that one. It's a very interesting picture. Yeah, to say the least. To say the least. All right, but let's get the Roadhouse. <laughs> we could talk to the kid all night. But. All right, question number one. Uh, Larry, since you're the defending champ, we'll, we'll let them start, right? All right. Yeah, that's Challenge. fine. All right, Brandon and Dave, uh, question number one. When the movie opens, What's the name of the club Dalton's working at? Oh, I know this. Dave, can I answer this? Hit it. Bam stamp. That's right. Wow, yeah. look at that. There you go. Oh, nice. Yeah. I told you, I just watched it. And in fact, I, I paid special attention to that. I'm like, that's a Mike Dell question. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. I, like that. I did. I see, yeah, that, I bet that is helpful to watch it with that in mind, all the little. It, is. it absolutely was, yeah. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, this next question's kind of weak, but Larry's the champ, so we'll give it to him. Uh, what kind of car does Dalton drive on his first trip to the Double Deuce? Uh, it's like a, a you know a nineteen sixty something piece of crap. No, 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 no. That's that's incorrect. Oh, that's I was going to say that's incorrect. Uh, I I agree. Do you know the answer specifically, uh, Brandon? Well, I know the model. That you know what I mean? Or the uh, yeah, I know the model car. I don't know like the year or anything. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I don't know the car cars, but I know what kind of car it was. Go ahead. It's a uh, Mercedes. Correct. That's right, a Mercedes. Black yeah. Mercedes. I was going to ask you the license plate number because there's a shot of it. An there is, and I and I yeah. saw you might. I don't remember. Which nah, one. I don't know. <laughs> wow, this could be a Larry. Uh, you're down two nothing already, buddy. Well, I got confused. I, I after I said piece of crap, I realized you were asking for the Mercedes. I would have. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I'm making listen, excuses. Li yeah. yeah. Listen carefully. Exactly. Yeah, you twisted a knee. Sure, go ahead. Okay. All right, it's back to Brandon and Dave. Uh, where is the Double Deuce located? I know this as well, but Dave, do you want to answer this, or do you not know? Well, I don't want to say anything wrong. I know that it's. Uh, I, well, we can confer. Uh, yes. Do we yeah, want to yeah. say? Do we want to say the state, or do we need to know how uh, specific do we need to get? Well, I want city and state. Huh. Well, I want to say. Well, Dave, I want to say it's Jasper. Is the name of the town or whatever? But that's right. That's Jasper's right. Well, I know. Yeah. No. It's can I, I know. I, yeah. Right. I, I know that. I uh, see. I think Jasper. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is is it supposed to play as a small town near Kansas City, Missouri? That is correct. Yeah, that's, that's correct. what. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well yeah. done. I don't know, Larry. You could be in trouble. All right, Larry. Yeah, that was that was a tough one. <laughs> you need to rally here, buddy. How much does Frank Tilgeman pay Dalton to work at the Double Deuce? Oh, I know this one too. Wow, you paid... you're pretty good, Brandon. Yeah. I do know. I told you. I have no hard. idea where they paid him. Um, five thousand up front, five hundred wow. per night, and he covers all medical. Expenses. Wow, that is correct. <laughs> well is done. Correct. Well done. Thank you. I think we got the uh, the five thousand up front. I like that was a nice touch. Wow, yeah. good job. Wow, it looks like we got a game here. All right, Brandon. Uh, what does Brad Wesley's girl Denise order to drink? on Dalton's first night at the Double Deuce. Ah, oh, this, this is one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Dave, do you know this? Uh, I can't. And, and, and before I answer, think about it. She goes up to the bar and orders it, and there's some uh, really intoxicated, horrible-looking man. I'm guessing it would be a call sex on the beach, beach, right? No, it's not. It's a, uh, it's vodka rocks. That's right, vodka rocks. Well, he man. goes, hey, vodka rocks. Well, maybe I shouldn't say this. It could be, this isn't a question, is it, what he says next? No, no, no. He says, hey, Vodka Rocks, how about you and me get nipple to nipple? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oddly enough, that's, uh, that's the line I use on my wife. And that's All right. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, my now, wife, actually, we were in a bar. I know it was, a, you know, like uh, the Double Deuce was a, is a pretty rough place. I like that um, when we see just how bad it is on uh, the first time we're exposed to it, that um, 
people, this is how I go to bars, too, in L.A., Pittsburgh, Chicago, or anywhere else I've ever been. I like when I'm in a bar, I like to hang out with my shirt off. Like to, oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> the guy dancing. <laughs> it is. People don't wear shirts to go there. <laughs> and the thing and I when I walk in. They start standing up and pulling their shirts off. <laughs> and then if the bouncer says, hey, can you settle down, the, uh, the, the carefully measured response is to pull out a Rambo knife on him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and speaking of which, because you already skipped over the scene that the band stand is, uh, I always wanted to try you, Dalton. I think I could take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah was like, uh, I always wanted to try you. That always disturbed me, that line. Yeah, he recognized, <laughs> he recognized Dalton immediately. All right, oh, yeah. Dave, here's an interesting bit, though, about that uh, Denise. She was played by Julie uh, Michaels. Uh, no, I don't know if you know that. But, Dave, uh, did you work on The Man Show in 1999? No, I did not. Because she made an appearance on The Man Show in 1999. She played, You're kidding uh, me. Yeah, she played Laundry Wife. I don't know if that means anything to you. I, you know what's <laughs> funny? I am just now remembering this, as a matter of fact. Um, it's, a, 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 it's, I guess, linked to that. I'm, I'm trying to think of how we would have tracked her down or why she would have called in. She called in when I was on the Corolla show a couple of years ago. She called in out of the blue and described herself as that as that woman, and we couldn't believe it. But I guess that's why she would presume that it was all right to just call up, you know, like, "Hey, I'm the, <laughs> I'm I'm the tramp from Roadhouse." <laughs> but yeah, she I did. Remember I, this I just remembered that. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw huh. Laundry Wife on the Man Show. Yeah. Laundry. All right, Larry, it's back to you, correct? Yes. In what city did Dalton and Cody, as played by Jeff Healy, uh-huh. work together prior to the Double Deuce? Oh, because mm. Cody mentions it. He says this place is worse. Yes, he than does. It. Damn. Um, yikes! That's a tough one, there, Mike Dell. Uh, hey, hey! I hear teeth being punched. Wait, <laughs> no, no, no! I'm, right. not touch- I'm not touching. I'm not touching. How dare you? No, <laughs> Actually, I'm looking at the TV. There's a commercial for the McDonald's burger on there. Uh, yeah, all right, yeah. No Google. I, I, don't, I, don't, I know there's reference to this city in the movie. I, I'm not sure if this is it, but I'm going to say Memphis. Incorrect. All right, then. Brandon and Dave, it's to you. Dave, I, I'll tell you what. I was going to say Memphis, but I also knew it wasn't Memphis because I know something else happened in Memphis, and I cannot remember the name of the town. I don't know if you know it. Um, hmm. It's another, I want to say it's another sort of like, Southern or Midwestern town, obviously, but I can't think of. Uh, yeah, I know. think it is. I, I, I'm with you. I, I can almost picture it. Uh, I'm gonna go with. Um, ah, I'm gonna be wrong. Um, yeah, it wouldn't be. Yeah, I was gonna say something else in Tennessee, but it wouldn't make sense for it to be a place like Knoxville or something like that. That's what I was thinking, but now probably not. Um, yeah, I think it is one, but yeah, but I think you're on the right track that it's in the southeast there. So let's uh, throw out uh, a wild guess there. Could it be, uh, it wouldn't be Little Rock. I'm trying to think of SEC. Not like a Tampa. Nah, probably not. Uh, not uh, Let's go with Jacksonville. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Incorrect. Hmm. We're we're looking for Dayton. Dayton, Ohio, I believe. Yeah, he says Dayton. It's a Dayton, Florida, too, because it probably was Dayton, Ohio, I think. Yeah, Yeah, I don't know. I just heard Dayton. So, yeah. Could be Daytona Beach. Who knows? Anyway. All right, uh, back to Brandon and Dave now. Now, this, this question is one of my favorites. Uh, when Dalton goes to Big T Auto Sales to buy his new old car, what TV show is playing in the oh. office? Okay, now, Dave, I know, okay, I can tell you the song, but I'm not sure of what show it is, but I think it is. It's uh, the song about, because they're cousins, identical cousins. Is that like the Patty Duke show? Or that, that is that correct. That's the, yeah, is, that it? is, is correct. that right? The yeah, Patty Duke show. Oh, uh, that was one of my favorites on Nick and Night back uh, in the day. One, one I do, maybe. by the way. And speaking of which, because I know of your uh, your fetish for the old shows and movies, I knew that was I knew that was going to be a Mike Dell question. You know yeah, what people Pat- say? I've never I've never watched that, but I hear it is one of the one uh, a real hidden a hidden jewel. It is just an it's good. It's solid. Job. A lot of those old shows you think oh they're so corny, but they're very well written. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, Patty and Kathy Lane, the the cousins, yeah. mm-hmm. the identical cousins. Uh, yeah. All right, uh, Larry, uh, it's 5-1 to one right now, and uh, you need to rally, buddy. 5-1? to one? Are you kidding me? 5-1. <laughs> yeah, wow. They've Damn. stolen two of yours. And, uh, uh, unless that's I, I like 5-1. That's, that's sort of like uh, when Wade Garrett 
comes back and visits his, uh, <laughs> visits his pal Dalton, and uh, there, there, there are five guys beating him up, uh, beating him up, and uh, and that it's cute that he can just stand. Wade Garrett can just stand against the wall. Hey, amigo. And just watch, watch his friend. It's like, it's like, oh, yeah, no, I know he's going to pull this one out. He's my friend. I've watched him. He's the best fool in the business. But how about this? In the meantime, maybe you could save me uh, getting hit in the head a couple dozen times. I know it's cute that I'm going to win this fight. I agree. But in the meantime, I'd just as soon not have to get stitches and maybe get cut. You old fool. Not a fan of the way Garrett. All right. Uh, uh, no, I so am Larry. for the most part. But I thought that was shoddy work on his Yeah, part. agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I enjoyed it quite a bit. All right, Larry, uh, yeah. and by the way, I never even saw Roadhouse until I heard you always talking about it on your show, Dave. And, uh, oh, wow. Y- yeah, I know. And the first time I watched it, it was on, like, Spike or something. And, uh, that, well, maybe this is a – no, it's not a question later. But uh, Tinker, that fat guy, when, when the polar bear falls on him, you know, yeah. and then at the end he says, well, polar bear fell on me. That's yeah. when they ended the movie right there with that line. Like, that was oh, they the movie. <laughs> yeah, they cut the movie right there. And I'm like, what oh, the hell? Oh, you know why? You know why, though? Uh, because the skinny dipping scene at the end? Or? Yes, that's exactly right. Huh, because of what? Weird. Right at the end of the movie, then, there's, oh. a, there's like a skinny dipping scene with, uh, with Kelly Lynch. And, oh, uh, yeah, 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 that's true. But before that, the thing, I always, uh, the thing about Roadhouse that, that is uh, insane to me is, so, you know, we, we've been told already that don't bother calling the, don't call, bother calling the, the cops. <laughs> because Brad Wesley has them in their hip pocket, and then that's just something that we are, we are, we're expected to assume right. that this is this is. It, by the way, it's not 1870 in the uh, in the West of the U.S. <laughs> there. This is this is uh, the mid 80s in, in in the Midwest. But apparently, there are still pockets of America that that are, are above the law. You just you you if you're rich, you can just run everything, and no one can do anything to do any to, to change that. I like that, but. Then finally, the townspeople come together, and with uh, with with shotguns, they combine to to throw to fill Brad Wesley fill, full of lead. They they shoot him dead on the spot, and the eyewitness is the guy pinned under the big bear, and they said, "What'd you see?" He's like, I, "A bear fell on me," and they all laugh. Moments after committing what I assume is their first murder, you, know, you always hear you always hear the Nam guys like say, "Don't don't ask about, never ask a man if he, if he had to kill somebody." That's not something anybody ever wants to talk about. But apparently, for these guys, it's fine to to murder someone, even if he's a bad guy. We can murder him and then have a good chuckle because the fat man got stuck <laughs> under a bear, and the police are coming. But don't worry about it because the fat man said he didn't see anything. Never mind that uh, that that that. Uh, the the police probably can figure out who fired these guns and that these guys are going away for the next uh, 15, 20 years for conspiracy to 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 murder. No, that's it, it's fine. Let's have a chuckle about the fat man. Well, well once again, oddly enough, I believe uh, a polar bear fell on me is also what Ray Lewis told the cops uh, <laughs> when he got arrested. But uh, well, speak, since you guys brought up the murder, Larry, here's your question: Sorry? How many gunshot blasts oh. did it take? To kill Brad Wesley. Oh. Wow. Jeez, I, I was going to save it for later, but we'll jump right ahead to that. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, go right to the very hard ones. Oh, that's not hard. Come on. Well, there's like, you know this. there's three guys shooting them. Four guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, just take a guess. I'm going to say, uh, let's see, he got shot there. He got shot, bam, bam. Uh, four shots. That's right. Wow, I was going to say four or five. I was uh, torn. I was trying to figure that one out. I was proud of what he thought of what keeps standing back up after those shotgun. And they're like close-range shotgun blasts. He's just Pure standing evil. back up. No, I'm not done. Yeah, exactly. It was like Brad Wesley. Movie. Brad Wesley can beat up any man in in Wesley's <laughs> mob. You know, he can he can beat anybody up. The guy who went to prison, whose throat he ends up ripping out poses a legitimate challenge. But otherwise, it takes exactly a swing and a half for, for um, Swayze to drop any of these guys. But when it comes to squaring off with the, uh, with the middle-aged uh, balding guy, that's, that's a challenge that he's not necessarily up to. Let's just take right. him in a fight. That, that's, I love that. Too. Brad Wesley is very tough. All right, Brandon and Dave. Uh, yes. When Dalton rents his room, he calls Emmett Sir. Emmett compares calling him Sir to what? Oh, wow. That's a great I think plan. I know that. Go ahead. Wait, what do you think? Well, no, no, no. And I'll confer with you. I want to say it's, it's uh, calling me, sir, is like putting an elevator in an outhouse. Don't, don't belong. 
something like that. <laughs> that is correct. That wow, is correct. you nailed it? Wow. That's yeah, right. Word. word for word. Wow, Brandon. Well done. That extra well, uh, viewing paid you. off. Yeah. Yeah. You're really redeeming the family name here. Thanks. <laughs> oh, 6-2. All right, Larry, how much rent does Emmett charge, Dalton? $100. That is correct. I knew that one. Oh. Good job. And by the way, Dave, I was going to say, I think it's, I, I have to redeem the family name considering how much shame I brought to it over the last few years, I'm sure. So yeah, this they is my chance. It, it, it was yeah. ugly. By the way, Dave, oh, no, I'm just mad at life in general. <laughs> but, yeah, sure, that too. Just to give you some uh, hint as to Larry's kid knowledge, uh, Dave, do you know how much uh, the lunch bill was for Daniel's son when he bought lunch for the uh, Elizabeth Shoe at the cafeteria in the school there? Oh, wow. Yeah, Larry knew that. See, that's the kind of thing Larry knew. Two dollars and thirteen cents. <laughs> well, tell him, Larry. Three seventy-five for both. Uh, it was that's two right. fifty for his and a buck and a quarter for hers. Yeah, don't mess with Larry and the Karate Kid. All right. He um, good. <laughs> he's very good. All right, now, uh, Dave and Brandon, I think it's back to you. Uh, how many employees did Dalton fire from the Double Deuce? All together, or, uh, at, like the first night. Uh, that, that for well, yeah, all together. Not yeah, he place. doesn't make any other firings there, I don't well, think. Well, no, well there was the thing, one Dave, more. On, on, no, we, uh, well, look, actually, on the first night, he gets rid of, uh, I think his name's Preston, the big uh, afro mustachioed fellow, whatever. He's very. Yeah, he doesn't like when, right. he, when uh, Dalton well, gets sasses him with a pig. Right, right. Well, and that's then, Morgan, that's a, though that's an uncommon. Morgan, I'm sorry, not Preston, Morgan is the name. And then and he also Perry gets Funk. rid that's of... Uh, wrestling legend, Perry Perry Funk. Funk. That's right. Yeah. Very good, that's right, I totally forgot. He also gets rid of the uh, the waitress because she's selling drugs. But yep. then, but then he also fires Pat, the bartender, who's Wesley's nephew. But then right. he also fires I fires think the guy who's Steve. been making time. Right, That's makes, right, right. Who's been making right. time with the underage girl? You're That's gonna exactly. be my regular. What's he say? You're gonna be my regular Friday night or something? Nothing <laughs> like that. And then she says it's great. He's, his line sways. He's like, but I'm on my break. And he says, stay on it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so what is so your I think, final I think answer? It's, I think it's four then, yeah? That is, is that correct. right, Dave? He, he, yeah, that's correct. He fired four employees, mm -hmm. and you know you know each one of them. Well, well done. How about so here that? he is. That's now, 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 now Larry, when, when Dalton fires Terry Funk, uh, uh -huh. Morgan there, what career advice does he give him? Oh, that's a great question. Um, he says uh, he, something about going to barber college. Uh, <laughs> that's right. He says there's always barber college. Always barber college. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, there you go. Uh, so it is now seven to four. So Larry's keeping it respectable. Is it really seven to four? Yeah, seven oh, to four. Larry's coming back. I didn't realize it was that close. Than I would have expected. Yeah. yeah, I didn't realize it was that close. Though. How was that? Yeah, you've stolen three from him, but he he's been holding his own lately. Um, okay. Uh, How about this what? one out of the blue? That just reminded me. Let me just throw a little side trivia question here. Name the movie that this line is. The world needs a lot of bartenders. Two weeks with pay. <laughs> The world needs a lot of bartenders. The world needs a lot of bartenders. Two weeks with pay. It's one man saying that line. Yeah. And, and i got to tell you, that was beautiful acting. Yeah, I like I, it. I felt like I was there. Yeah. How do you know um, it was beautiful I'm acting? <laughs> as a movie. It sounds Bostonian to me. Uh, that's exactly <laughs> right. That, that, should really? tell it, that should tell you. That should be it for you right there. I was picking that. up like uh, Middle Eastern. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, then the, then the acting definitely wasn't good there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that one, Larry. Here, any ideas? I have no clue. No, I'm stumped. <laughs> the Departed. Uh, Al ah. says that to uh, to Marky Mark's brother. And by the way, The Departed is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Or no, no, not terrible. to Marky Mark's brother, to Marky Mark himself. I, I'm starting to get those two confused because they're both uh, getting near 50. But uh, um, <laughs> the Departed, yeah, the Departed is, just is the it's Departed. Awful. Well, it has its moments. It has its interesting, um, you know, over the you know ultra violent kind of scenes and a couple of good Nicholson lines and stuff. But I agree. I mean, the 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 plot of that picture is absurd. Yeah, yeah. it's just ridiculous. And, and the fact that he uh, Scorsese won the Oscar for that, correct? Yeah, but, oh, but again, it was one of those lifetime, lifetime achievement season. awards. Exactly. You know, like we got to give him something. All right. Did Patrick Swayze win for Roadhouse? No, I don't think so. Well, shamefully, no, yeah. he did not. All right. Now, uh, let's see. Brandon and David, your turn. In this one, this should be very easy. Uh, hey, by the way, I'm not. I'm not uh, trying to bring an end to this or anything. Just uh, asking, what is the uh, what's the winning total? Uh, Fifty. What is it? <laughs> okay, perfect, First to fifty. Perfect. First to fifty. Let me get, let me get comfortable then. Let me lay down. <laughs> yeah, we got about ten more. We'll, we'll go through them quick. 
Uh, no, I'm not what, in a hurry. I just go. What three rules does Dalton give the bouncers? Uh, that's great. Dave, uh, I know this, but go ahead if you know it. Well, I, you know, I, uh, it's, I, I'm embarrassed. I'm realizing that three months you, you lose the finer details it's, uh, since the last I've seen it. But he says, be nice. Um, that's one of them. Be that's nice. Number three. Uh, that's number three. Yeah. If, they wa- if uh, the customer won't be nice. No, that's not a rule. That's, that's yeah, part of rule. number three. It's, well, one, here, yeah. look, I'll, 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 I'll tell you what. The first one he tells them is to uh, uh, never underestimate your opponent. Opponent, Expect the unexpected. That's, that's the first one. <laughs> Correct. And the, se- the second one is, uh, I believe it's something By the way, old- just to reiterate, yeah. just to reiterate, these are employees of a bar. <laughs> Never unexpect your own help. <laughs> well, what's even funnier, though? Wait, what's even funnier, though, is that he's giving this speech to the entire staff, not to the bouncers. The waitresses are there. The bartenders are there. You know what I'm saying? What the hell is the waitress going to do? Expect the unexpected. <laughs> when he pulls a gun on you, make sure you defend yourself. <laughs> anyway, so that's that's one thing. But then the other, the second rule, though, I believe, is uh, never start anything inside the bar. Always take it outside. Yeah, take it um, outside. Yeah, and then the third one's be nice until it's time to not be nice. That is correct. How, will we, how, how will we know? Yeah. How will we know? You won't. I'll tell you. <laughs> that's right. You I'll let you know. Right or I'll let you know. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll tell great. you something like that. Yeah. Wow, that's a good job, Brandon. Yeah, that's yeah, nice. extra roadhouse viewing this morning really paid off. I it think. did. It did pay off. I need to break serve at some point. Yeah, yeah you I, do. I yes, want to catch, catch. I don't me. know if you're going to get this one, Larry. This one's kind of tricky. Uh, oh, what Lord. song is Brad Wesley listening to on the radio when he drives Dalton off the road? Oh, He's life is it. but a dream. Yeah. Wow, good job. Oh, that's the name of it? <laughs> I, uh, uh, it's, that's the song. Well, that's the one line in the song. I don't Maybe know. It's not the name. It isn't the name, actually. Yeah, I thought it was. In fact, that's well, not the name. I know what the name of the song is, and that's incorrect. Shaboom, shaboom. Ah, there it is. There it is. That's the name. <laughs> shaboom, yes. shaboom. Yeah. Shaboom. Really? That's the name of the song? Yeah, yeah. shaboom, shaboom by the chords, I believe. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, but, look at that. Yeah, there you go. We'll, give you, we'll give you credit for it, Larry. Now, half credit. point. Half point, I think. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. Uh, <laughs> by the way, that, that movie or that song also makes a uh, an appearance in the movie Clue. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, Clue is a is a very underrated movie, I think. No, it's not. I agree. That movie is philosophically bogus because <laughs> they shot different endings for everyone, and depending on what theater you saw it in, the, yeah. the killer could have been anybody. So then, what's uh, the point of seeing the movie at all? You've you've made a movie that ultimately you're saying we have no ending for. We've just stuck it in there. I, but I suppose then you're counter to that would be it's uh, it's the journey it's not the uh, <laughs> that's right it's not the destination not the, uh, destination the yeah good point cool. all right all right uh dave and brandon what kind of earring does jimmy brad wesley's top fighter guy have in his left ear it's a diamond stud isn't it i'm, I'm consulting that what, yeah it's either that or it's a cross or it's um is it a diamond stud? it's definitely not a hoop a diamond stud might be right actually so is that your answer Dave? I, well, I don't know. If you have a stronger feeling about it, go with no, your just go with it. That was your first thought. Go with that. I feel like it was a diamond stud. I think that his, I think that his nephew, I remember, I feel like he has a diamond stud. I mean, has a hoop. But I think, uh, anyway, yeah. I, I, go with uh, that. Uh, that is incorrect. Larry, do you know oh. that? It was a little cross. It was That's right. It was a God little damn cross. It. I swear I wasn't going to interrupt you once you turned it over to Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of the guy who he beats up in in the driveway of his house. Uh, yeah, I knew. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah course, Jimmy is the the, the guy, guy who gets his, his throat pulled out right. At yeah. The, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Across. Dang, I may have cost us severely. Here. Right, Larry right. just closed the gap. It's eight six. If he gets this one, he could cut it to eight seven. Wow. Look at Oof. That. Yeah, he's right. steal. All right, Larry. Uh, we're closing out here. Let's see. Oh, I can't turn the page. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, when Dalton goes to the hospital to get stitched up, yes. how many broken bones are listed in his medical file? Uh, well, he gets nine staples, I know. Um, and then she lists, uh, here's her dossier, she says, uh, injuries and something about stainless steel, all screws. Something. You may not want to talk too much. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> there could be another question coming up. So just uh, broken bones. That's what we're 30, saying. 33 broken bones. 
Incorrect. Dave, I think it's th I think it's thirty two broken bones, Dave. I'll, I'll abide by your your uh, your thought. Thirty two. Incorrect. Incorrect. Thirty one. Oh no. <laughs> thirty one. The whole time bones. I was thinking it was thirty two broken bones. God damn. All right, well, it's still, uh, uh, it's still your turn, Brandon and Dave. Uh, what? It is awesome, by the way, that, uh, that you know, any thought that you ever had that the medical professionals are, are just that professional, and when you're in their, uh, in their company in, in a professional situation, that they don't look at you as a, you know, they, they, they just look at you as someone who needs to be cured. Well, that's thrown out the window the way she swoons when he takes his shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> and then the whole, the, whole, the, the whole philosophy talk and everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, see, well, see, I think that was going to be my next question, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll still give it to you. Well, <laughs> what college did Dalton attend in what was his major? Ooh, do you know and what oddly enough, And it's just bizarre that uh, this information is included in his medical file. <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah, like I also have my, my CV, my cover letter, uh, just yeah. in case. You never know. Seems awesome, uh, yeah. God, what the, you know, I Dave. Actually, I don't. I can't remember what college he attended, but it is. I want to say it was the sore bone. Sure. No, uh, <laughs> didn't strike me as an Oxford grad either. Unless I'm he was a Rhodes go, scholar, perhaps. Yeah, he. Ray, he must be. It must be Ivy, right? He must have done some. Probably. <laughs> it probably <laughs> is. I, actually, I won't be surprised at all. If it turns out he went to like Princeton or something like that. Um, yeah, that doesn't ring a bell. Uh, uh, NYU, Columbia, I'm trying to think. Columbia of sounds good. Yeah, let's go with that. And, and what's his right. major? Was he a philosophy major? Is there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, or that's incorrect. Larry. Oh, College, you should have went, went with the NYU because uh, that, that, that was the answer. That's right. It's NYU. And uh, his major, Larry, is, of course, philosophy. That's right. Well, wait a second. Second. Wait a second. He can't get a, he can't get full credit on that. Hold on a second. Yeah, we got we we clearly said philosophy. You, you can't. Yeah, but he but can I knew steal the whole that part thing. It. It's a two parter. Yeah, hey, whose game is this? Who's I won't stand for okay, this statement. Whose fake radio <laughs> show is this? Good day, <laughs> sir. <laughs> now wait, 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 wait. What was the final determination though on the shaboom question? Then uh, he got full credit for that too. Oh, all right. <laughs> That's nice. That's all right. He's the champion. You got to knock him out to take the belt. Okay. You know? all, right. all right. It's eight seven. Larry could tie it with this question right here. All um, right. He's stolen two questions. This could be uh, hit. No, this is his turn. Larry, what does the sign say over the urinals at Ooh. Wade Garrett's old workplace? Oh, oh. Uh, d don't eat the big white mint. <laughs> that is correct. Don't eat the big white. You mint. You are terrible. I knew that one. So we're back. We're back on. Uh, well, actually, yeah, we're back on service eight eight, and we're right on schedule. So uh, Brandon and Dave, uh, where does Dalton take Doc to eat on their first date? Uh, they, Dave, they went to that diner. Um, I yeah, I, I you know, know what I'm saying. And, and I, I know the, the, the drunk diner. guys. I, just, I I know obviously the diner, but I don't know uh, the name of the joint. Though. I, I, for some reason, the, the name Ella's. Is like in my head for some, Ella's Diner. There's a shot of the sign. Like, yeah, exactly, and that's what I'm trying to think down. of now. Yeah. Um, I was going to say Ella's. I don't know if that's right or not. But yeah, with definitely. I, I yeah, there's no doubt that it's uh, some uh, you know definitely kind of Midwesterny sure. old lady name like Martha's or something like that. Uh, no. What'd you go with there? Ella's. Is what I was Ella's. saying. Yeah, that's fine with me. All right, in Ella's in Diner. Incorrect. Larry? I have no idea. I'll say Ooh. Mel's. Ooh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie's Grill. We're looking oh, for Bonnie's Grill. Oh, what was it called? Bonnie's Grill. Oh, well, there you go, Bonnie, though. There you go. That's another good, good name. All right. Okay. Let, I wish we would have named my daughter that, Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful name for a young child. Yeah. I think Flo would have been uh, better. <laughs> Flo. Flo Damashek. Oh, and Mo Damashek. Actually, it'd be yeah, nice. That's right. That would have been Flo nice, actually. Anyway. Please. Larry, what department store is coming to Jasper because of Brad Wesley? Uh, J.C. Penney is coming. <laughs> That's right, J.C. Penney's. Dang. Yeah. He gives that speech where he's all proud of himself because J.C. Penney's is coming to Jasper. That's true. <laughs> that uh, doesn't date the movie or anything, right? No, no. Uh, no. Wait a second. So we're now we're now trailing here. Yes, yes you're now are. trailing. Nine, How many eight. more do we have here to catch uh, up? We've time. got one, two, three, four, five questions left. Uh, all right, we got we got to get all of these. All right. Uh, well, oh, I think you're going to know this one. In what city did Dalton kill a man? Oh, that's that's Memphis, Dave. I'm mm -hmm. pretty positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
That's right. He killed him in Memphis at yeah. nine nine. Yeah. Larry, when Brad Wesley order or uh, he shows up at the double deuce after uh, Red's place burns down, what drink yeah. does he order? I think he asks for Jack Daniels. That is correct. And what Man. does he say? What does he say to uh, to the band? Ah. <laughs> uh, he he says I I don't I I I saw it on AMC so they cut the line but he says play something and then they blanked it out I don't know yes but he says he says I think he said calls him Elvis as a matter of fact he says Elvis play something with bleeps you know <laughs> I think it's with balls yeah. right isn't it play something with balls they they uh, pick up balls really is that uh, what it is that's what I thought he told them oh. yeah that is right that is correct. Wow. There you go. So I get a point from Dave. So I'm up <laughs> one nothing. You're up one nothing. Dave's showed house Good. That's exactly right. <laughs> All right. So it's now ten nine. Larry, back to Brandon and, and Dave. What did the note say that was stuck in Wade Garrett's chest? Oh, I know this one, Dave. And in fact, again, another one. I was like, Mike Dale is going to ask this question. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I can't that, wait a second. I, I I just out of dignity now. I that I can't think right, of any yeah, yeah. answers here. It's got to be. Uh, um, and I'll even give you a clue if it'll help you. It was something about obviously that he picked you picked wrong or something like that. Right. It's a, well, I'll give you a big hint. It's it's as a, a result of the coin flip. Oh, uh, tails, right? Or is that? Yeah, that's right? part of it. Tails. Yeah. I think it says it was tails. That's it right. was it's, tails, right? It right. was tails. That is correct. There you right. go. So Very wow. nice, Brandon. Ten, really. Ten, ten. I only I only have two questions left. Um, uh -oh. Wow. Oof. Larry, uh, what does Dalton say after the polar bear falls on Tinker? What does Dalton say? Um, he says something like, uh, you two were meant for each other, or something along those Ooh, lines. Yeah, very close. I don't know if I can give you credit for that, though, since it's such a tight game right now. All right. Um, Fair uh, enough. Very close. Brandon and Dave? For well, some reason, Dave, I thought he said you two were made for each other, but... Not meant that you two are made for each other. Uh, yep. <laughs> Go with that one. Uh, yeah, it, it, it says you're made for each other. Uh, uh, so do, you, I get, do I get partial credit for that, Mike, though? Yeah, you had everything, but you said <laughs> meant instead of made. Yet Brandon yeah. said made, but he said two, and I don't think he says two, but uh, well, all right, we'll just give well, you two. We'll give it. We'll give it to them. We'll give it to them. <laughs> we'll all right. Them. Wow. That's all right. Wow. All right. Team Damashek. Well, then Team Damashek can close things well, out right here. We can feel it right here. Yeah, we, we only got one question left. So if you guys get this right, it's over. Mm -hmm. uh, All right, Dave. Dig deep. What is on? What logo is on Tinker's hat? He wears a baseball oh. cap, and there's a, a little patch on there. Uh, what's the baseball cap? So it's not a baseball team, it's, and it's not like a John Deere hat, I don't think. Uh, that, that actually, now you say that sounds not too bad. It could be Caterpillar. It could be, could even be Jack Daniels. Caterpillar might sound better than the John Deere. The John Deere sounds too obvious. I'm guessing it would not be licensed in the '80s. Well, actually, that's before professional leagues figure out that people, you know, to stop teams, people doing that, make them pay to wear their logo. So, well, you're putting a lot of thought into that. Huh? I know. I've been, I've been of uh, I've been of no use here at all. I'm, 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 this no, is no, that's not true. Let's what are you talking this. about? Let's debate this for a second here. Let's just get yeah. a thought. I think. Uh, not a, it's not a team logo. For, I'm pretty positive, right? It's not a team. It is a company of some sort. And being in the Midwest and that he's a redneck, for some reason I do want to say it's some kind of tractor or, or caterpillar. Or, you know what I mean? Well, what's a red? What color is the hat is what we need to figure out first. Uh, I can't you remember that much. If it's a red hat, what would it be? Would it be, oh, that's a good one. I think that's maybe what it could be. Some sort of a chaw. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice guess. I don't. Some sort of a. Chance. Well, now I'm guessing no because of Dell's reaction. I'm trying to read yeah. it. We're okay. on the right track. See, I, I think I think we're better off with the cat or the uh, John Deere. The cat. Um, go go deer then. Let's go deer. No, see, I uh, I don't want to be the. Uh, you know what? I'm not making the uh, determination here. I don't I'm know. Be, yeah, I know, but I don't know either. I don't want to be. I I uh, misguessed on uh, the cross when I thought it was the cross and I didn't say it. So no. Um, stalemate over there. I think maybe I think maybe I like cat over the uh, over John Deere. You you get you so you say let's go caterpillar. Yeah yeah, yeah with the yeah. 